All right, y'all tuned in live. We back. It's the Midnight Mirage, Mr. Controversy, the collaboration, 2018, as we promised the people. We're going to continue it. Um, last week, we had some little technical difficulties. So some of you all probably saw a preview of this on either the Blackbeard page or even Mr. Controversy's page. But nevertheless, now you have the full version of the classic. So once again, I just want to thank all the ladies and gentlemen for tuning in. Uh, we're very, very thankful to have you all here. Um, this evening to go into some hard hitting stuff, some real good deep information to clear some things up for some people out there. Um, of course, I'm your host, Blackbeard Mirage, and then we got the man himself driving the the the, the monstrous, the disastrous tank himself, the brother, Mister Guillotine. We're gonna let him shout you all out. Well, what's going on, fellas? You know, coming from the man, Blackbeard Mirage. What better introduction that Mister Controversy could have? on a public platform and I'm ready to chop it up brother with, with the man the assassin I'm ready to go brother I'm pumped up I'm heated I'm ready to go alright good yeah so as y'all can see you know you got the two powerhouses um, collabing and we both you know doing a phone conversation so that's how we record this thing it's going to be real real laid back and relaxed um, no different than if we was all around you know each other at a, at a, at a picnic or a barbecue or a family reunion even, um, just, you know, everybody chilling and just going into deep conversation. So if you're going to have your uh, popcorn and, and pen out and your sheet of paper out or whatever beverage you have. So this is for education uh, purposes, a little more than entertainment. Um, that's what we're dealing with here because, you know, a lot of so-called black people have been dealing with entertainment for a little too long. So it's time now to open up the mind frame a little bit more and dig deeper into, you know, the, the more intuitive side of ourselves. So what we're going to do is, is um, me and Mr. Controversy, as I said, this thing will be real, re real laid back and relaxed. I got about 33 topics that I wrote down and the brother, Mr. Controversy, has a few that he's going to be throwing in as well. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to pair all these up and in, in probably in threes. So we got 33 total and then we'll pair them up in threes. So. The first thing is, is this we're going to talk about colorism. And then we're going to talk about black male lying propaganda. And what I'll do is, is I'll introduce these topics, give what I think on it, and then the brother will go into what he thinks on it as well. And that'll be the formal um, organization and transition of the tape so the viewer can kind of, you know, stay on track of what's going on. So it won't seem like we all over the place. So, Blackbeard Mirage and Mr. Controversy, Tanks and Guillotines, Volume 1. We're going to say this shit and y'all going to deal with this shit. Now, however y'all deal with it is on y'all. Uh, we're going to give you all facts. We're going to give you all truths. We're going to give you all receipts, books, bibliographies, websites, or whatever else we can come up with. But the point is, is you're going to have to do your own due diligence to look deeper into what it is that we are saying. So the first topic is going to be colorism. Only black males or black men truly value black female beauty. You are not his standard of beauty. And the not that we're talking about is this foreign male standard of beauty. The second one, colorism again. Black men actually love black beauty, including love for his own image and the love of what he reproduces, a.k.a. so-called black people. And the third one, black male lying propaganda. Black men are the masters of giving slash showing love to black women. Examples R&B and old statues of goddesses around the planet to combat the feminist black male bashing narratives. Now, I made a mistake and said that they're going to be in pairs because we're really doing them in trios and threes. So as you can see, I just laid down the first three and now Blackbeard to give what he got on it. So let's first talk about this colorism. one. Um, only black men truly value black female beauty. You are not his standard of beauty. Um, it was a few weeks ago or a few months ago, rather, we had a little situation come out in social media and on the whole TV scene where there were some um, rather darker skinned female actresses, you know, complaining that they weren't getting the starlight and the spotlight in certain roles and weren't getting the shine. And, and you know, it's just that same old story, just them seeing the um, more lighter skinned women or even a Caucasian woman or a woman of another ethnicity. And them basically crying that, you know, they don't have the opportunity to be in that position. Um, now, I've said this on the last tape, but I'm going to have to say this again. When you have in any, you know, natural habitat, whether that be a savanna, 
whether that be a, a jungle or any type of terrain, what you're going to have is, is you may have a multiplicity of species there, but all those species will be hanging out with each other and will be socializing with each other. So let's take, let's say, the African waterhole. You know, you may have, let's say, the zebras grouped up. You got the giraffes grouped up. You got the antelope grouped up. You know, and then, of course, you got the lions grouped up. Now, what you will notice is, is that they all have, you know, of course, the, the common need for the waterhole. So that's why they are all there. But even in that time of them, let's say, you know, getting the water and requenching their thirst, even the lions are not really in that mentality of trying to slay and kill. That really usually goes down after the every, after everybody leaves the water hole. So it's almost like being at the club. Like, you know how you'll be in the club, you know, and you'll see some people and you'll be like, yeah, man, they go that fuck nigga over there. We're going to get his ass after this shit is over. But because you in the club on some general shit, and it's everybody in there, you know, partying, having a good time. You're not finna just pull the guns out or whatever and just get the blasted. You're gonna do that shit after the shit is over. So, even in human behavior, you see that kind of repeat in, in the in the animal behavior because you better believe that after when all those animals leave that water hole, that lion is now going to you know go and attack that same gazelle that he just gave that little ten minute pass. You'll even see little birds flying on. And, and, and on the on the backs of crocodiles eating the small bugs off of the crocodiles. Well, crocodiles are one of the most ferocious, you know, predators alive. So what I'm saying is, is that you can have different species, you know, all in one environment and everybody not try to amalgamate with each other and not try to um, force themselves on each other. So you're not going to see the female crocodiles going to, let's say, the male gazelles. And this whole movement of female crocodiles writing books talking about, you know, I don't know, crocking, let's say. And the whole movement is about hooking up with male gazelles and shitting on, you know, male crocodiles, basically. Or let's say even if you had, um, uh, 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 let's say if you had a, a tiger, you know, and the tiger had a magazine. And on the magazine cover, of course, you're going to have all the female tigers, all the beautiful, bad female tigers with their little lingerie and stuff, right? So how silly would it be for, let's say, a pigeon to come to that tiger's magazine shop and say, hey, I want to be the new standard of beauty. You know, replace your natural standard of beauty, which is the female tiger, with me as a pigeon. You know, that tiger will look at that, that male tiger will look at that female pigeon like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're not my standard of beauty. You're not my natural species have. So that's how I see, you know, a lot of those colorism arguments. You know, these females want to run to somebody's platform or men of other, another ethnicity and, you know, run to their magazines and run to their movies and run to their videos and all this different stuff and expect to be, you know, the main casting role um, in the film like or, or, in the, or in the video. It's not going to go like that. So... You know, that's kind of what I got on that, 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 that standard of beauty part. As far as, um, you know, the black male loving his own image, you know, as I said on the previous one, I'll kind of hit this real quick. You know, you're not going to see black males trying to get um, a relaxer for our beards just because, <laughs> you know, if we haven't washed our face yet and, then it's, and it's kind of scruffy, you know, we saying, dang, man, I want to get rid of this beard. And all of a sudden I'm perming my beard now. Or you're not going to see black men walking around with blonde beards, you know, or fucking <laughs> and dyeing their beards blue and red and gold and all these other silly ass colors, you know, that a lot of the sisters are forcing us to have to look at. So you're not going to see us doing that. We actually love, you know, what we naturally came with, um, even if the brothers have locks in their hair. You know, they, I, I ain't really never heard no brothers complain about like our natural feature. And, of course, our skin tone, you know, the brothers have been cool with that. Even in the 90s growing up, um, they did have a little movement where they were um, putting the light-skinned male on the pedestal. And, you know, was was giving him the praise. But even back then and even to this day, I, I, I still don't remember any of the dark-skinned brothers that I was around, you know, complaining or having an issue that, you know, light-skinned guys like some... Shamar Moore character or, or any of them guys in the 80s that was singing and, and uh, it's like I never heard no brothers really complain about that. So, you know, we, we've always rocked with our natural image and you, you'll never hear us say things like, um, you know, we want to abort our babies and stuff like that. And, 
you know, although you got brothers out here that don't take care of their kids, but you don't have this whole movement of them running to Planned Parenthood to abort their babies and then getting on social media and telling other black men that, hey, if you accidentally get a black female pregnant, um, you need to go to Planned Parenthood or force her to go and get the abortion. I ain't never seen no movement like that. Um, as far as this black male lying propaganda on us, you know, not being loving, caring type of men, um, but us being brutes and aggressive, not having no heart chakra, not knowing when to turn off the aggression and, and, and basically, you know, show love to our woman or our children or family and stuff like that. Uh, that's just a bunch of bullshit. Black men are the masses of giving and showing love to black women. All your original R&B songs were started by the black men, which deal with love. And the women that they were talking about, of course, were the black women. Who do you all think were in the neighborhoods they were growing up with? Who do you think they were losing their virginities to? Who do you think were, were the first fine ladies that they saw that was working at the gas station or, or that was their mom's friend or that was their teacher or something? It was some black woman. So when these men grew older and they started singing, whether it was Barry White, you know, Marvin Gaye or whoever, it's like, who do you think that his subconscious mind had the original symbol of beauty? It was some black woman. So that was where a lot of the inspiration come, comes from. And I can even go before, um, you know, the R&B and, and, and stuff. I can go to the early 20s. You know, these, these brothers always been doing that. I can also go to the Moors in Southern Europe when they used to write these love poems for their women and stuff like that. You know, that whole what y'all call simping and stuff like that, that's just an exaggerated form of what the black man naturally is to his own woman. You know, so that's a bullshit. And then I wrap this up with this. All these female goddess statues that you all see around the world, whether it's Pravati, whether it's Kali, whether it's Aset, whether it's Athena, whether it's Aphrodite or whoever. Who do you all think was putting in the, the, the back breaking labor to actually build these statues up? These 50 foot statues and all this different stuff. Who do you all think was really doing that? Well, so-called black men. So, you know, that, that's just a bunch of lying propaganda that's been put out here to damage and poison the image of the brothers. You know, and that's basically what I got on that, and not a tank. Greased oh, up, yeah, brother. greased <laughs> up and ready. It's about to run on. Oh over. yeah, Yo, boy, I tell you, brother. Thanks for that lead in right there, the assassin. I'm gonna tell you something, boys. You know, this this whole bullshit propaganda that's been out here talking this shit about black men don't value black women and all of this bullshit. I'm gonna tell you something. These swirling bed winches out here going all over Mari Povich and Oprah shows and all of this damn shows through the years promoting all of these lies. Black men don't take care of their kids. Black men don't do this shit. And they just came out with a study. I did a video on that where they were talking about black men are the most dedicated fathers that they got out there. And there was a study that they did on that. And I brought receipts to the table. Wow. So this whole bullshit narrative that black men don't take care of their children is a bunch of bullshit. And number one, I've talked about that situation with those three bed wenches in detail. That that uh that Crystal and the Queen B, I talked about her father. I talked about Serena Williams' father. I talked about that Aisha B's father. All three of these females admit it. That they had good black men as fathers that took care of them, raised them up, took care of their families, and for them who go on a national platform, all three of those creatures go on a national platform and disrespect black men on national TV for the whole world to see. And it's an actual disgrace. It's a disgrace. And, you know... Back to this, well, this the, the beginning topic, Blackbeard. Re recap me on that beginning topic, brother. Okay. It kind of yeah, because you because you just hit on you hit on the last part about the black male line propaganda. So you answered that one. So now give the people what you think about the colorism in regards to oh yeah, the colorism. The, the, yeah, that, 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 yeah, that black men really are the only ones that value black females' beauty, and also oh, that yeah. black men actually love black beauty and what they reproduce in black people. Man, that goes back to that first collaboration we did, and you broke that down so perfectly about the species and how it actually works out there in nature. And the bottom line is, everybody out there that hears Blackbeard's voice, when he broke down the species, I mean,
mean, if any jackass can't understand that, they need to get the fuck out of here. Because he broke that down to the very species that a little two-year-old kid can understand the differences in how species and the natural order of the universe operate. Right. It's no damn way, and to make this plain and simple, because me and my boy Blackbeard, we come from two different sides of the same coin. Blackbeard broke it down from an intellectual standpoint. I'm going to give it to you motherfuckers raw and gritty, like I always do. The, the swirling Negro bear witches, this is what Blackbeard's talking about. These Negro bear witches who go like that Amira Negro or whoever the fuck she calls herself, that so-called Afro-Latina, and was butt hurt because that Latino DJ said in her face and gave it to her ass right in her face, you are not our standard of beauty that we're looking for. And she got all butt hurt about it. And it goes back to what Blackbeard was saying. You cannot go to another man of another race or nationality and force him to put you on a pedestal above his own species of woman. You, you look like a total jackass to try to do something like that because that man is going to value his seed. He's going to value his offspring and what woman he was naturally put there on the earth to have. And the bottom line is I broke down in one of those videos, the black man is the man who, rep, who appreciates, and Blackbeard said it as, as well, the black man is the man who was created to appreciate the beauty of a black woman. The black man was created to value the ass of a black woman, the hips of a black woman, the skin tone of a black woman, whether she be the darkest of the darkest or the lightest of the lightest. The black man is the man who was created to honor that, to appreciate that. And for these jackasses, these creatures, to go out there knocking on the door of a non-black man saying, let us in. We want, we are the ones who you're supposed to appreciate our beauty. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. They sound like utter jackasses when they try to do that. Because the bottom line is this. Every nationality on this earth understands the natural order of the universe. They know exactly how it was created to be. That's why when I talked about that ingenious those, those receipts that I brought to the table about that OK Cupid survey, and every one of those white people in that Bachelorette series chose other white people. Every single one of them. And then you got that damn so called first black Bachelorette. She's the only jackass who chose a white man. The only one. Wow. Why all of the white women chose white men, all of the white men chose white women. And here goes the only jackass to get on national TV and disrespect the men of our own race. And as you guys see, Mr. Controversy is heated the fuck up. Because the one thing that I do not tolerate, and that's self-hate. Because for me to be a black man and have a mother who's a black woman, to have two sisters who's black women, to have a wife who's a black woman, to get there and create a fucking platform and disrespect black women on a fucking national platform, I would be a total jackass. And I deserve to be took out. And the same thing goes, and you guys all know my stance on these swirling bed winters. I'm on a motherfucking crusade. Facts. And my boy Blackbeard. And I'm going to wipe the floor with them motherfuckers. That's facts because, right the, because they're not going to get away all these years, Blackbeard. Nope. Excuse me, brother, because I'm a little heated. All these motherfucking years, they have been allowed, these swirling bear witches, to run amok and say all this shit out of their damn mouth, talking shit about black men on national TV. And these weak, oh, don't let me get into these motherfuckers. Is that black oh, beard? Yeah. I'm going to tell these black motherfuckers yeah, apart. Yeah, they, they, they on there. Yeah, yeah. They, they on there. Because the bottom line is this. These weak motherfucking black men these beta male sips, and that shit really fuck with me. Ever since you told me, Blackbeard, that, that the majority of these black men out here are beta male sips, that shit, that lines up perfectly. Matter of fact, very matter of fact, um, hold that thought, because now we're going we gonna, to we gonna go to that right now. So, 
the next we're gonna go into the next trio and then we're gonna let the brother mr controversy just basically keep going in um on these topics because he already just hit at hit at where we're going so the first here go the first one the outliers the killmonger archetype quote unquote the glitch in the false reality slash parallel universe or the black male alpha heterosexual male who uses force mating white women hating on white men where is this video the equal for black females who publicly shame black men Ooh, and in the final mating again white women typically choose white men white genetic survival the code so as far as these black up beta male simps they of course are the polarity to the killmonger archetype so go right on in on that because that's where you was going oh yeah boy i'm telling you black beard you 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 said a mouthful of that brother because i'm damn sure going there i'm gonna tell you something the read the one thing that pisses me the fuck off everybody out there know it's two groups of motherfuckers that i got heat for i got that heat for them motherfuckers and that's that them swirling negro bear witches and a weak ass beta male black males out there I got that heat for them. Yeah, and when Blackbeard, when Blackbeard told me the majority of these motherfuckers out here is beta male self, that explains how you can get a whole race of damn swirling bear witches to go on national platforms disrespecting black men on national TV and they don't have a damn thing to say about it. And I've been sitting back watching this shit go on for all, all of this fucking time. Yeah. I've been sitting back watching these weak motherfuckers all of these jackasses got a YouTube platform. All of these jackasses got a platform. And they sat back and watched all of them damn bear witches talk shit about their ass on national TV. You got the two, and everybody out there knows, the two motherfuckers that I can't stand. That bleached ass, fake valley girl talking, bleached ass, a fake eye color contact, WWE bear witch who went on national TV and told the whole world, I don't date black men. And that damn TMZ did not even ask her that question. The actual question that that man asked her, he asked her, do you date black white men? That's what he asked her. That's the question he asked her. She had to take it upon herself because of her self-hating ass. And she had to get disrespect black men in front of the whole world. And tell them, I don't date black men. She had to volunteer that information to that man. Yep. He didn't ask her that. Sure did. And that was the white man that said that. The white man didn't even ask her that question. And this is the kind of shit that I'm talking about. These weak ass beta male simps. Didn't make a damn video. I didn't see one video out there when that bitch said that. Not one. It should have been a whole swarm of black men going the fuck off. And then, then you got that other so-called first black bachelorette, which going to tie into the damn topic of the white women and the white men being on code. Yep. You got this damn Rachel Lindsay, the first so-called black bachelorette, and sat there while all of the previous bachelors and bachelorettes, the white bachelors and bachelorettes, chose white people. And this fucking self-hating jackass gets on national TV and chooses a white man. Mm -mm -mm. And then every black man that was on that damn show, even that other that other brother said it. And I put it in one of those famous montages that I did. That brother said, What that chick came on this show, she knew damn right she wasn't gonna choose none of them black men. She knew damn right. Yep. And I looked at I did I did a side by side comparison and something struck me, Blackbeard. I did a, a you see one of them recent masterpieces that I did where I put that white woman on there, and what did you see surrounding that white woman? All of the men in that group was all white. All white, man. And she told a white man. Now, you got the black bachelorette. Oh, I'm gonna break down this. You gonna, you gonna, you gonna, you, you gonna love this black beard. I broke down that picture of the, the black bachelorette, and I looked at the number of black men that was in that crowd. And the thing that crossed my mind that was pretty interesting to me was that there was, when you look at that picture, there was a large amount of black men in that crowd. A large amount of them. And you know who put the men in there? The, 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 the producers of that show put those men in there. And it further proves how pathetic and how self-hating of a son of a bitch that she is. The fact that you had 
educated. You have brothers that was nice looking. You have brothers that had a whole career going for themselves, financially secure, and you couldn't choose one of those black men because her ass didn't have no intention of choosing none of those motherfuckers. And just like I said in one of those videos, that bitch was happy as hell when she got to that last black man and she was able to get him off that show. Sure. Wow. I bet you I made a big point and it was funny as hell when I thought about it. I said that bitch probably went home that night and, 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 and masturbated her ass all damn night long. She was so fucking turned on. I got rid of the last one of them niggas. The last one of them. They're out of here. I don't have to fight. See, what it was, Blackbeard, she had to act the role. She had to play the role like she was giving everybody a fair shot. The black men. Of course. She had to play a role for national TV, just like I talked about. How we talked about them, them, the white man and that black on black crime. See, she knew that damn backlash was going to be coming on her ass from the black community. So what she had to do was go through the role, play the role, like I'm giving a black man a chance. When all she was doing was going through the motions, getting rid of them one by one. So she was, she was just like, damn, and I can't wait to get to the last one of these motherfuckers so I can get to the white man. <laughs> this is sad, Woo! Bro. That's what that bitch was saying in her mind. And all of you out there know what I'm saying. The words of Mr. Controversy, you know what I'm saying is the truth. That damn Rachel Lindsay could not wait until the last black ass was out of that damn show. And I'm wow. telling you, that bitch had a party. When she got rid of the last black male out of that damn group, that chick had a damn party. Because now all she got is she got a whole smorgasbord of exactly what she wanted. And that was the white men. Now she got a group of white men to choose from. That's what she wanted. Wow. That's what she wanted. And the thing that amazes me about it, Black Bear, when you look at the white woman, that white woman... She, she's straight up in your face. She's like, I'm on code. I know from the get-go I'm choosing a white man, so don't even bother putting them niggas on there. Don't even bother putting one of them in the crowd. Don't even bother. Mm. I'm not choosing that black ass. She's straight up. She says, I'm race first. Just like my counterpart, the white man is race first. I'm race first. Hold on. And I want to pause you real quick. For any black female listening to this shit, that shit make y'all look real bad, boy. But anyway, keep going. Yeah, just like Blackbeard said, you know, I'm going to tell you, this goes back to something that me and Blackbeard talked about. You good sisters out there, I'm talking to you. And this goes back to something that Soul and Black said back in the day about friendly fire. If you good sisters don't get in mass, and do the same thing that me and Blackbeard and David Carroll and Kid Organic. If you don't start getting together as a whole unit and start firing back against those bad winters and make a clear distinction, because me and Blackbeard have stood our ground. We have said we are not going to stand for fucked up black men's bullshit. We're not going to stand for these apes and thugs and savages and criminals. We're not making excuses for them motherfuckers. And we call them out. And that's what you, mother, that's what you need to do. You good sisters out there, you need to step the fuck up. And you need to start calling out these damn genocidal, self-hating, disgusting creatures the same way we do. Because you're going to run into a problem. You think you got Tommy Sotomayors out here who group all black women together? You're going to have a whole bunch of brothers who going to turn on you. If you don't step the fuck up. I already see it happening. That shit already happening right now. Yeah. You need to make your voices heard. You need to make a clear distinction between you and the swirling Negro bear witches. Because if you don't, you're going to have a whole bunch of brothers who are going to turn on you. Because they're going to say, why are you not calling out your own, your sister? The way we call out these damn brothers. We call them motherfuckers out. So go into how that future is going to look for them. Give them a prophetic look into the into the mind's eye of Mr. Controversy. I'm going to tell you something. I predicted this one. Everybody out there seeing that damn video of that swirling bed wench sitting outside the Chris Brown concert, boo-hoo, crying in tears. We all saw that video. And I predicted, and Blackbeard knows, I call myself the Black Nostradamus. The black Nostradamus, because I have predicted what's going to happen to you motherfuckers out there. You swirling Negro bed, you? 
bunches out there. You keep talking that bullshit about black men and your own race of men, your chicken gonna come home to roost. Shout out to Malcolm X. Your children will come home to roost. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna find out something. The white man that you put on the pedestal, the white man is race first. And the only sisters that he has any kind of comeback with is sisters who love brother. The black women who support black men only. That's the kind of sisters that white men are trying to kiss, check for. But you self, you self-hating, disgusting creatures that think that by kissing a white man's ass, that's going to make him want you. Hell no, it's not going to make him want you. And I put the proof and the receipt in those videos. That OK Cupid survey proved it. The white man is not checking for you, swirling Negro bad witches. He does not want your self-hating asses. And he has made that very clear. The statistics show it. The Young Turks talked about it. They did that survey. The same survey that I talked about. And they had the exact same findings. Blackbeard Mirage, the assassin, he saw the exact same survey. Thanks. And what I'm bringing to the table cannot be disputed. And I have several challenges that I put on the table for everybody out there to participate in. I put several of them out there. And I put the most recent challenge out there to, for anybody out there to find. You got the Queen Bee that created a swirling movement. And Blackbeard talked about this earlier in this collaboration. You got the, the, the queen bee who created that swirling movement. And she's telling other black women not to date the men of her own race. To date non-black men. And I got a challenge out there for everybody out there to participate in. I want you to find me a white woman who created a movement. And I said, I kind of like that name of twirling. Since, since the, uh, the queen bee called it swirling, I want the white woman to call it twirling. And I want it to have a formal name attached to it. And I want you to find me a white woman who created a movement telling other white women to date black men only. That's what the challenge is out there. Yeah, that shit, that shit wild, man. So what we're going to do now is, is we're going to transition into the next three, all right? So let's get it popping, boy. I'm ready. So the first one is black male attacks. Black men are attacked as a collective. The second is killing Christ. Black Wall Street, Rosewood, etc. The hangings are not random. Choosing the affluent alpha male to mob up on. And then the final one is secret warfare. The covert, undercover, passive attacks on black men. No longer open racism like the past. The fear of black men. First thing I talk about is is um killing Christ and secret warfare. A lot of this goes back to basically just subconscious memory that the Caucasian people have when it comes to so called black men. Um one thing about it, although we we've been in this, you know, stupor for quite some time, um and, and, and although the world does look at a lot of us as silly, but don't ever get it confused. As to think that the so-called white male or the pale male doesn't know who we really are. Um, for all you all out there that are familiar with these different fraternities, these organizations, these different societies and these different groups. Um, one of the more general ones in particular is Freemasons. You know, you have some Freemasons that, that may be just dealing with, let's say, some regular science. But also you do have the ones that are perverted and they are choosing to hide certain things and manipulate and abuse people. And part of that manipulation and abusing is what is going on with so-called black people here in America as far as them, you know, A, being called black and not really having no type of nationality, no type of, you know, representation on United Nations, no type of real political power, etc. And a lot of that has to do with basically the secrets that are being kept in these societies. And one of these key secrets is, is that that long story short, that the white supremacist system really has only two real goals. Um, the first goal is is to create a segregation or, or basically a type of sexual apartheid 
to make sure that the alpha heterosexual black male cannot sexually reproduce with whoever he wants, whenever he wants and however he wants, because a lot of that has to do with economics. So that's one of the um, the, 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 the mandates of it. And then the second one is, is to always basically keep COINTEL pro like um, operations and basically this never this never sleeping militaristic operation of keeping the aboriginal male down. And, you know, the only reason it's like that is because they know, long story short, what we really are about. Um, and they know how we are when we come together. So it's basically rooted off of a fear why they have to do more of a secret warfare against us. Because, you know, it's almost like somebody who's, you know, the biggest bully on the block. It's like, yeah, you cannot like him all you want. You know what I'm saying? You cannot like when he, you know, is able to just move his muscle around like, like, like the way he moved around. Can't nobody really check him. But at the end of the day, you know, you're not about to basically just openly attack this guy. You know, you know, if you want to attack him, you may have to come at a different type of angle, because if you just openly attack him, you know, you're not going to beat him at that. And that's kind of how it is with us. It's like so-called black men don't really even realize that all these horror movies they put out, all these different just movies they put out, like any bad guy character in these movies. If you look at the physical appearance or if you look at some of the behavioral or psychological um will say characteristics of these evil or these bad guys in these movies they're all black men in nature um especially if you look at a lot of the a lot of the horror movies if you look at a lot of what the so-called big bad demon is and all this different stuff it'll it'll in one way or another have the look of a so-called black male so the average black up male out here doesn't really know um just what his image really is um, and, and how how powerful it is, you know, and how fearful, you know, people are of his image. So as far as now transitioning into um, black male attacks and us being attacked as a collective, you know, this is something I've always noticed my whole life. You know, um, you know, black men could do something. You know, let's say it's one black male who does something and he has locks in his hair. Um, and it may be a report now that, you know, there is a black male with locks that committed a crime. You better believe that every black male with locks is now all of a sudden going to be harassed, bothered, etc. Um, even black females that don't have locks and black males that don't have locks. If they're in that particular area, um, they will be harassed. I know this is true because when I was in college, I had a friend, long story short, when it was a, it was a crime that just went down. And it was just this general, you know, description of the guy. And my friend was just walking home from school. Long story short, you know, the police ran up on him. He had to go through this whole shit, you know what I'm saying? Had to run from the police and all this different stuff, basically because of this situation. And, and, and it'll be wild because you'll literally have done nothing. And these people will be so hell-bent on trying to destroy you for no reason that you basically have to end up getting away from them. Because if you stick around and try to, really, even if you stick around and try to fight them, you're going you're gonna to end up getting stung by the bug that they're trying to illegally put on you. So... This is what you have. You know, it's like black men don't get the we don't get the respect of being an individual. You know, the so called white male, he can go and hack he can go and hack somebody up. Um, he can go and do some kind of Bernie Madoff type of, you know, Ponzi scheme. Um, he can go do any type of Enron type of crime. He can do anything you can think of, but all so called white males are not gonna be, you know, hit with that, that bad bug. You know, they're not gonna be all looked at as a certain way. You know, although when you look at FBI statistics, when it comes to a lot of these sexual predatory statistics and a lot of these, you know, um, sex trafficking statistics and stuff like that, you see his name popping up the most. So even making certain general, you know, assumptions about the so-called pale male, a lot of them could be even true. But nevertheless, um, that's what I see with that. And as far as killing Christ, you know, it kind of goes back with that alpha um, heterosexual black male killmonger archetype. You know, uh, just this the fear of him, just the fear of him, the fear of him reproducing and the fear of him creating more versions of himself that looks like him. You know that I mean, it's just the fear of that. So this is why in so-called Black Wall Street or Rosewood and these hangings that they show us, because a lot of these hangings that y'all see on these uh, Google sites, for example, they got a book called Without Sanctuary that shows a lot of the pictures of the hangings, etc. But. We never really thought, well, who are these people that they're hanging? You know, because they try to make you think that they just choosing random black men off the street just because they black. But at the end of the day, a lot of that shit wasn't going down like that. You had black up males back then that was kissing their ass and they weren't choosing to hang them. 
So why are they choosing this particular brother? What was his background? And then when you look into his background, you see that, oh, he's a businessman. Oh, he didn't went to college. You know, oh, he didn't got drafted to the NFL. He he one of the first 10 black men that got drafted to the NFL, um, you know, or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, he didn't just started a school. You know, oh, he didn't just came up with some type of, you know, formula to something that, that he didn't just got a patent. So it's, it's, it's these type of black men and these are who you all see that are being castrated and hanging in the picture. And I say this final thing and wrap it up. The main reason why you see them castrating black males or the main reason why you see black males being hypersexualized or oversexualized when it comes to um, the phallic energy. It is because it's the removal of the phallic energy and the removal of the reproduction. So that is the occult symbology behind them cutting off the phallus of Osiris. Or the phallus of Asar. They cut the phallus off of the so-called black male because of the fear of him reproducing himself. So you black males out there need to get out of your lower selves and thinking that, oh man, my private part is big and, and all this and all that. It really ain't got nothing to do with any of that. It is the genetic material that you hold in your private part. That is what they don't like. And that is actually what your, pri your private part's power is. It ain't got nothing to do with no damn size and all that shit. So we need to, you know, get out of our lower selves and think more on our higher self. And they cut your genitalia off and they attack your genitalia because of the genetic material that you have inside of you. And you can create anybody, but nobody can create you. That's why they hate you. I'm going to wrap it up with that. You can create anybody on the planet, but nobody on the planet can create a black man. And that's fact. Not even a black female. She can create somebody that may look like a so-called black person, but nevertheless, it's not deceit. Of a so-called black male. So, I mean, I think this shit real basic, man. A, a, a black person to me is a person that comes from a black male and a black female. That's, that's, right. that's facts. And even if a black male chooses to reproduce with a woman of another ethnicity and nationality, I mean, to keep it 100, it's going to still have some of the features of that woman. But nevertheless, the seed of it, it still is, you know, of that man. But because that woman is not a so-called black woman... Then some of the physical appearances will be different. But I can honestly say that um, when you see people, when you physically see people, and when you are around a person and, and some of their subtle mannerisms and stuff like that, basically their essence and their being, that stuff comes from your father. The genetic material that a man shoots out of his phallus is the strongest shit on the planet. And, and and you all better better remember that, you so-called black males. So this shit way deeper than you all thinking out here. Get the fuck out your damn lower self and start and start trying to really figure some shit out. But um but that's what I got on that. So I'm gonna re say the, the three and I'm gonna let the brother Mr. Controversy go in. Um the first one is just that secret warfare on so called black men. Um the second one is how they kill Christ and the Rosewood examples, like how I men you always talk about, and also these um black men being attacked as a collective. Boy, I tell you, Black Beard, that's a, that's a, a, you said a mouthful, brother. I mean, that was an excellent breakdown of these topics. And to add my two cents to it, man, you know, I was just thinking about why you were talking. I was thinking about that scene in 12 Years of Slave, which is a perfect example of the power and the strength of the black man and the fear that these cowards have of black male prowess and the physical strength that we possess in the, the, the traits that we have. Because in that movie, there was a scene where that that white uh, slave owner or that slave master tried to buck up against that black man. And he tried to go one-on-one -on -one with him. And that brother beat his living daylights out of that motherfucker. And <laughs> everybody that saw that movie, 12 Years a Slave, you remember that scene where that black man tore his ass up? Wow. And in the very next segment, right after he beat that man's ass, that slave master's ass, here you go. You got a couple, uh, a couple of uh, white men trying to lynch that brother. Wow. And luckily, the brother survived that lynch, uh, that attempt. But you, it goes back to all of these weak ass coward motherfuckers who know that one-on-one, -on -one, they could never go head up with that black man. They got to get 
a whole gang, and every time you see those lynching pictures, like you said, without sanctuary, whenever you look at those lynching pictures, you got the very same scenario every single time. You got a whole gang of thousands of white men, and you got one brother in the tree, two brothers in the tree, three brothers in the tree, but you got a whole thousand, five hundred some, a whole mob of white men. They took all of them, just for those few little brothers, just for those brothers to get them that tree. And what shows the weakness and the cowardice and the fear that they have of trying to fuck up, head up against that black man. And I'm going to go back to the Adam and Eve theory. And the black woman going to play a role in this one. You think about Samson and you think about the Bible and you think about the uh, how Adam the, the, was taken down. The, 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 the Muslims would say, the nation of Islam, you know, they talk about the white man being the devil. You can, uh, uh, you can take the snake in the beginning of the time and you can replace the snake with the white man. And the white man can't go head up with the black man. He can't go to uh, Adam directly because he knows he'll get his ass whooped. So what he has to do is he has to go to Eve, who is the black woman. So he goes to the black woman and tries to use her to take down the black man. And that, you see, played itself out in society today. Because the only way that they, the white man can bring down that black man, he has to take that black woman and give her them corporate jobs. He has to give her the welfare. He got to give her those jobs and human resources. He got to give her all of the benefits and put her on all these TV shows, put her in the news, all these news reporters, put her all this propaganda gas in her head up saying, you the most educated on earth, you strong, you independent, you all of this shit, but the black man ain't shit. So if you gas her head up and make her think that she's all that, now she starts to believe that shit. She starts to think, yeah, I am all that. The black man ain't shit. So now, what the white man has done is become the hit in hand. He's the puppet master behind her who uses her to take down the black man. So then, the white man says, you know what? I think I can go a step farther. Now, I can't just go out there just lifting their asses out in the open. So now, I got to go in secret now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a system called child support. And I'm going to create, because I know these, these niggas, they're going to they gonna knock up one of these systems and then they're going to take off. And what I can do, see, the white man ain't dumb. He knows the psychology of you savages. He knows how you motherfuckers think. So what he did was he created uh, uh, what I call a spider web. And he created that spider web so you dumbasses can get caught in the web. It's a certain type of prototype of black man that he can't catch in that web. And, and it's the very man that he always tried to lynch in history. He cannot get the black man who's an entrepreneur in that web. He cannot get the black man who will start his own school in that web. He cannot get the black man who's a, uh, starting his uh, own law, law firm in that web. He cannot get the, the black man who starts his own uh, uh, dental practice in that well. The very black man that he wants to target, he can't get him in that well because the alpha black males are not going to go create a, commit a crime. He's not going to go and rob somebody's house. He's not going to go and leave his children without a father. He's not going to do those things. So the white man cannot get them in that trap of child support. He cannot get them in that trap of that legal system and get to, and that brings me to the next step of that felony. First he got the child support, then he got the felony. He figured out these apes and savages, if I'm giving all the black women corporate jobs and, and shutting the black man out of there and putting black women in all the human resources departments so she can block that black man out of the corporate America which in turn forces the black man to go on the streets and commit crime. Therefore, I can put that felony on top of him when 
he commits the crime, now I got his black ass, he is done. Because that brings me to the next step of the spider web. And it's called human resources and background checks. So the white man created human resources and background checks. So now it all ties together. So now you got child support. Now you got the felonies. Now you got the human resources and you got the background checks. So now when this ape goes out there and commits a crime, now he got a felony on his record. Now, let's just say that this this ape decides one day that he's going to straighten up his act. Right, Blackbeard? Mm-hmm. He gonna, he's going to straighten up his act one day. Right. He's going to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to go to straight and narrow. He's going to go to the job. He's going to go put in that application. And guess what that application got to go through? You guessed it. Human resources. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what's going to pop up? They got him. When human resources do that background check on his black ass. Next thing you know, what's going to pop up? Blackbeard, that felony. Yes, sir. And guess what happens? Now they told his black ass, we not giving you no job. Now he's forced now to resort to go back to the streets and the criminal life. And now what happens is, you know this ape, he ain't went out there thinking he's something, you know, oh, I'm the sexual king. So he done went out there and knocked up all these sisters. Now, the white man say, oh, yeah, that motherfucker got six kids from six different one of them. And all, get all they ass going to go to child support to put his ass on child support. So right. now, the white man says, I got it. I'm going to take this a step farther. I know how I can get their black asses eliminated even farther. Now we're going to make a law that if you behind on that child support, we can lock your black ass up. <laughs> Woo! Boy, I'm telling you. And, and the, these dumbass apes and savages don't even, they, they fall, this, this is the perfect reason, Blackbeard, why you got all the prisons and penitentiaries across the United States. Full of 90 some percent of black men. Full. Because the white man set the trap for his ass. He put that spider web out there. And he used the black woman in order to reinforce the spider web to make sure that black asses get locked up. So because of his fear of what the black man could do if he gets his act together and he does not, he can't get him in none of them traps. So he figured out. See what happened was. Hold on, real quick. Hold on, hold on, real quick. Let me let me transition to the next one because you um basically gonna go into that. So what I want okay. you to talk about now is is um is integration. How that was one of the worst things and how your and what your father said, and then talk about the black male ego and basically what you see. Um, you know how they want to bicker and argue with each other, and they don't want to collab. They don't want to build no kind of businesses, and they don't want to build no kind of empire. And, and leave nothing behind for nobody. Woo, boy, I tell you, boy, this is a topic that me and you both are familiar with and have a passion about because we talked about this black beard, how these, 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 this previous generation of black males, black people, period, didn't build up shit. And every one of these kids, that all you out there, let me talk to the blacks out there. All of you black people out there, both male and female, you think about when you was born, did you have a trust fund handed to you? Did you have an inheritance handed down to you, passed down to you? Did your family have a family business passed down to you? And I know the answer to that damn question before I even ask it. Hell no! And these jackasses in these previous generations dropped the ball. That's why these these black boys got to go on the damn streets and, and, and commit these damn crimes the damn family wouldn't even, don't even have a damn business to, to, so he can work in. That's facts. To get his ass off the damn streets. And we can have truth. a chance in life. That's facts. And the same with the sisters. These motherfuckers ain't created nothing for them girls. When nothing. them girls can go and, and have their own beauty salons or something like that, a family business, and where they can go work in that business. Right. The blacks should not eat. Man, I'm going to tell you something. These other races of people, you got, when you look at the student loans, you see all these damn blacks in debt. All of them so-called black colleges, Grambling, Bethune-Cookman, the Marching 100s, fam, fam you. All of these black colleges, you got, you look, if you look at all of them damn, everybody that graduated from them colleges, they're damn student loans through the roof. Student loan debt. 
motherfuckers ain't passed shit down or paid the college up ahead of time. But you get to the Jewish people, get to these other people like that, I guarantee you, Jack, when they go to college, that shit is already paid up. It's full. Because them motherfuckers don't play that. They don't play that shit by them student loans and that debt. They make sure them kids ain't gonna be settled with no damn debt. But the blacks, you can't even have a funeral. I think me and you was talking about that black beard. You can't even bury a black damn person without the whole damn family going in debt to pay for it. Because they ain't put shit to the, they ain't set up nothing ahead of time to make sure that the person can even be buried without everybody be putting in debt. And it's just a, a disgrace how these people, and I'm going to go to that integration thing. I'm going to tie that in to this integration. And I talked about how when we had that family get together, my dad made that controversial statement, which I thought was ingenious. When he said that integration was the worst thing that ever happened to black people. And I remember, for those of you who are uh, long-time listeners of Mr. Controversy, you know that Mr. Controversy grew up in the streets. I grew up hood. I grew up in Liberty City in Miami. And all of that bullshit that he trying to sell on the TV about this South Beach and all this glamour and glitz, fuck that. That ain't the world I come from. That's somewhere over the other side of the tracks. That's that shit they try to sell them damn tourists. That's why them motherfuckers was getting jacked and killed when they come to Miami. Because they they tell for that bullshit and thought that Miami was about uh, was South Beach and all that glitz and grammar. And them motherfuckers turned their ass around to Overtown and got jacked and got killed. Knowledge is power. It's a gritty ghetto called Liberty City in Miami. And it's a dangerous, violent place. And that's why I grew up. And when you, my dad told me, he said, Al, he said, take this out. We're going to go drive over there to Overtown, and we're going to go look. And we, I'm going to show you all of the remnants that used to be black businesses. And we went all around Liberty City. All around the place. And sure enough, what my dad said was right on the money. All I saw was the, re the remnants of barber shops, shoe shops, convenience stores, all the re remnants of black businesses during segregation. And as soon as integration happened, Liberty City turned into what it is today. And you want to know some? You want to know some? You, you want to know some crazy real quick? Just to um, put this in there: when the United States was trying to come deeper into the South, guess which black men gave them the biggest problems? The Aboriginals no, in so-called Florida or Miami, the Seminoles, and yep. the brothers from Georgia. There you go. But, there you go. But go ahead. That's right. That's right. And 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 you know. Blackbeard, the assassin, he knows, you know, I, 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 I know all about the Dirty South and all about the Georgia, you know, being that my dad is from Georgia. And so, uh, and my family's in Georgia. So, the bottom line is, you know, Blackbeard, the assassin, he knows I know, and I went up to college in, in Georgia. So, I know all about Georgia, and I go up on a routine basis. And the bottom line is, you know, we the, the 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 white man, he is a he knows what to do at what time because what happened was he made a critical but he he, he made a critical error, and that's where integration comes into play. What he did was when he did segregation, what he he he, he miscalculated because that's how he you had a rosewood created. That's how you had a black Wall Street created. And what he failed to realize was, damn, if I leave these niggers on they, to their own devices and I, and I separate them to where they have to depend on each other, if I leave them like that, these motherfuckers, all them damn alpha males going to get together and they're going to start building shit. And thus, you have a Rosewood and a, a black Wall Street, a thriving black community. And there was even one in Mississippi called Mound Bayou. Look at the fuck up. All of you out there, look that up. Mound Bayou. M-O-U-N-D. B-A-Y-O-U. I'm going to tell you something. The one thing you got to realize, Mr. Controversy is more than a, an aggressive, tear your ass up motherfucker. Mr. Controversy.
University has a extreme intellect and knowledge of history. Now, my boy Blackbeard is the master of history. The master. But also, Mr. Controversy knows some shit, too. I do thorough research, and I learned my history. And you need to know your history out there. And the bottom line was, the white man miscalculated it. Because he figured out, damn, fuck. You know, I, I, I left these motherfuckers to them, their own devices, and they created a damn Rosewood. Shit. Because see what the white man thought. He thought that every black person was dumb. He thought that they was just some niggas. They was dumb. They, they can't get, they can't do shit. They, they, these motherfuckers don't have an intellect to do nothing. And they found out a hard ass lesson when them motherfuckers saw Rosewood pop up and they started seeing these black people with houses, land, businesses, farms, their own self-sufficiency, our own economy. So what did they do? They did the same thing that the white man does by using the black woman and turning her against the black man. What he did then, he uses the white woman to come against the black man as well. So what he does is tell the white woman, go, go say you was raped. Go say that, that you was raped. So what we'll do, we'll use that as an excuse to go and pick, burn up all of those black people's hard work. All because we're jealous of them and we know that we can't stop them no other way. So what we're going to do is make you cry rape so we can have an excuse to go over there and burn down their shit. And that's what they did. They, 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 they tore down and burned down Rosewood and tore, burned down the Black Wall Street because they were jealous of the progress that those blacks were making when they're left to their own devices. And I'm going to say something to you blacks out there. You are a smart people, and they know that. They know you motherfuckers are smart. But I'm going to tell you when, why they created integration. See, the white man miscalculated leaving you motherfuckers segregated. Because when you are forced to be together, you get your shit together. Let me repeat. When you are forced to be together, you get your shit together. But what he did was he said, damn, I can't, I can't keep this segregation shit going because these motherfuckers don't come up. Them damn alpha males gonna start building up businesses. They gonna start building up land. They gonna start buying land. They gonna start being self-sufficient. So we gotta find a way to break these motherfuckers apart. So I got an idea. Why don't we create this integration? Because if we create this integration, these motherfuckers will start going their own direction. See, the, the white man, he's not stupid. He knows that blacks are selfish, and that gets me to that old Michael Jordan and all them motherfuckers, too. I'm going to say that because Blackbeard might have that yeah. down the fight. Yeah, but let's, Leah, because I really want to um kind of transition into the next, the next three. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and get ready to go to the next three. Um, so let's go into this shit. Let's go into it. So the first one, buyer's remorse. These pro-black females, aka ex-Negro bed stenches. Next one, ghetto gagging fantasies. Why swirlers wear natural hair. Final one, shooting the messenger. Blacker males rather argue with us than confront the traitorous Negro bed stenches and these other weak simps that sit on ice. So let me go into this shit. First, what I'll do is, is I'll tie the ghetto gagging fantasies with the whole buyer's remorse, because in order for you to understand the buyer's remorse, I have to understand you have to understand why they wear their hair natural and why the white male pale male wants them to wear their hair natural. The other day when I was on, I was online just looking at some stuff. I was looking at a video and. Long story short, it was it was a brother in the comment section talking to some people when I guess he was talking to another so-called black female. And she made a comment about, um, well, you don't have to worry about that because us swirlers wear our hair natural. And I found that to be very, very interesting because it was almost like it was something that was specific that goes with that particular movement. So it's almost like if you think about Spider-Man, you think about the Spider-Man suit. You think about Batman, you think about the Batman suit. You think about the Green Lantern, you think about, you know, the ring and the Green Lantern suit. 
But when you think about the Negro bed stench or the swirler, the costume is the natural hair. So then you ask yourself, well, what's the whole big thing behind the natural hair? Because you see, and yes, she's doing it, but it's more so she's making a, a decision to do it to, let's say, please the people that she's trying to um, get get their attention, which is these pale males. So then the, the, the real question then goes to say, well, why does he want her to wear natural hair? In order for you to understand that, this has to go back to the prisoner of war situations or so-called times of slavery. You got to remember that these black females, you know, they weren't able to really uphold and keep up with their hygiene like they really wanted to. They weren't able to shower and bathe like they wanted to. They weren't able to clip their toenails and fingernails like they wanted to. They weren't able to take a shower, I mean, wash their hair and use conditioner and really scratch their damn scalps like they really wanted to. Um, they weren't able to brush their teeth like they really wanted to. They weren't able to really consistently do these things like they really wanted to. I'm really taking you all back to the time of how this stuff really was. So another thing also is, is that they weren't able to really wash their clothes and wear different clothes and different, let's say, undergarments every day like they really wanted to. So you got to already think that on a just specifically looking at that and then looking at that, the, they're already being looked at as animal like people anyway, because the animal like people is going to transition you into the bestiality and why the pale male wants them to wear their hair natural. But anyway, so you have this black female who who's not, let's say, as clean, um, looking kind of rough, let's say. And one of the things that. You know, she's not going to probably be able to take care of like she wants is her hair. Now, because us as Aboriginal people, if we're not taking care of our hair a certain way, then of course it's going to, you know, may get a little dry and it may feel a little brittle and hard. OK, now a derogatory term that people use is so-called nappy. <clears throat> but nevertheless, y'all get what I'm saying. So when this pale male was engaging in these ghetto gagging fantasies, this is the state that she was at. You got to remember now she wasn't, you know. She didn't have no fucking tampons and all that stuff like y'all got today. So her period wasn't as, you know, it wasn't as clean as y'all thinking this shit was. I'm, t I'm showing you all what this shit really was now. So when he's engaging in these certain acts, he's doing this shit really with a woman who's not that clean. Okay. Because I read in a book also one time that there were a lot of diseases that were being spreaded around from these encounters between these pale males and these so-called black females. So not only do you have the diseases that they came from Europa with, and you all know about that from the whole smallpox, the tuberculosis, the syphilis, the leprosy, um, when they had the dirty blankets and they were so-called passing that around to the aboriginals and stuff like that. I was also looking at uh, some history on New York and the different rodent and the rat infestation in the cities of New York. You want to know where those rodents and rats came from? They came from the original European Caucasian settlers who were in so-called New York. And after they fought those aboriginals in there and moved them out of those particular areas, this is where those people were settling. So the reason why New York has that giant rat infestation is because of those Caucasians up there. So these people are already used to not really being clean when they do shit. Go back to the times in Europa. They got a book out there called Dirt where it talks about basically the living conditions of how Europe was. These people would literally have rivers of feces just in the streets like this stuff was nothing. Even the whole concept of chivalry where a man would take off his coat and put that on the ground, that's because it had a lot of feces um, and just dead, nasty things that was on the ground in so-called Europa. So they would do this for their wives and stuff like that, so their wives didn't have to step in this shit. So not only did he take his coat off or his shirt off and put this on the ground for this bitch to step on it, but he literally picked it right back up and put it on himself. So now I'm showing you all the mentality of the pale male, and I'm showing you the living hygiene condition of the Negro bed stench. And now I'm mixing this whole shit together like in this big mixing bowl that you all got in you all's kitchens. And this is what you have. You have a big dirt fest and a big um, slime fest and a basically passing of STDs and stuff like that. Then you also got to remember this too, that these Negro bed stenches had these fake ass bullshit ass re relationships and marriages with these black up males on the same living quarters that they living on. So after this shit is going on, now she's going back to the fucking outhouse where the, where the, where the, where the black up male lives and now she's sleeping with him, kissing on him or some shit like that. So this is what was going on. Like the, in the old times, people weren't brushing their teeth and using deodorant and all that shit, you modern ass 
really idiot ass people are thinking. This shit wasn't like that. This shit was really like the hygiene was not that good. People wasn't waking up taking showers and shit like that every day. People was urinating and defecating no not too much a few feet away from where they bathing and eating and where all their animals is at. So this is the situation. And then when you got two cultures of people living together, you gotta remember these European Caucasians, they had a whole different kind of culture in what they fucking lived in compared to these black females. These black females didn't really live in no shit like that. So when they started being captured by these people, being forced to wear their clothes, that's another thing. When you see a lot of these slave pictures and you see them with them big ass, old ass, wrinkled ass clothes on, them weren't they fucking clothes. Those were the old clothes of those Europeans. Why you think all them clothes and them fucking pictures never look like that shit fits those people? Because that's not their clothes. They don't even come from that culture. So you not only taking on their clothes, all this dirt and all this nasty ass shit going on. And, and the bestiality comes in because these pale males always look at um, black females as animals. Go back to the hot and tight, the Venus hot and tight history in South America with so-called Sarah Bartman. I've talked about that story before. And she was looked at as this savage animal. And basically this woman died at like the age of 25 from just drinking herself to death. Because she's being used and paraded around in a cage just because she got around behind. But she didn't know what them people was about to get her into. So she started out basically as being an animal in the cage for them. Having apples and, and, and bananas and all this shit thrown at her. The same little exhibits that she's at, they got other mutated, deformed people. So they got this, basically, this regular so-called black woman there around these other weird-ass, deformed-ass people and literally, like, parading her around in this shit. And that's how it started out. Then it transitioned into the prostitution. And this is what fucking happened. So they've always looked at them as animals. You got the nappy-ass hair. You smell like an animal. It's animal-like sex. These pale males are already used. They came from the caves. Although people want to talk about that and try to be derogatory. But see, when I say that, I'm not being derogatory. I'm talking about their real history. These people were used to that kind of stuff. So that shit wasn't really nasty to them. It was nasty to these black females. But these black females did it for so long that they, be, they, they became Negro nooseneckers or Negro bed snitch. And they, they became that shit. That's why you go in the hood now. These hoes don't be taking showers. They be smelling like fish and shit like that. They don't be brushing their teeth. Some of you niggas be spending the night over these females after y'all have sex with them. They don't go take their showers. They house be dirty as fuck. Dude, where you think this fucking mentality came from? It came from these pale males that they've been fucking the last 400 plus years. So then I'll wrap it up with the buyer's remorse. After they've done all this shit, they see how sick this shit really is. They came across a few Blackbeard and Mr. Controversy tapes. They like, damn, this shit, you know, this shit ain't really the move. So she tried to clean her image up, get all pro-black or whatever, got the same afro, but put a little shea butter in there, wash it up a little bit. It ain't at the ghetto gagging stage no more. And all of a sudden, she and you niggas face like she pro-black, you know, because she got that bias remorse from all this nasty ass shit she done did from getting pissed on, from getting shitted on. You know what I'm saying? From having dog bowls and cauldrons of fucking vomit poured on her head. Fucking boiling fucking pots and pans of fucking vomit poured on her goddamn head. I was looking at some shit to where some of them, some of these pale males and some of them sick ass Arabs that these whores are flying over to fucking Dubai and sleeping with that these men literally will take laxatives on purpose. Like before the sexual encounters, these motherfuckers be taking laxatives and literally so they will have loads of shit to fucking shit on these people. Like this shit is real life. Like. These men are taking fucking multiple laxatives just so they can have and produce mountains and fucking buckets of shit for your ass. So this shit is nasty. So after doing all this type of stuff, hell yeah, you're going to become pro-black real quick and throw your damn fist up in the air and all that shit. But it's no different than having buyer's remorse. You bought a product and you don't want it no more. Now you want to return it. But ain't no receipt for that shit, huh, is it? But anyway, let the brother Mr. Controversy go in on that shit on whatever you got. Oh, I tell you, boy, the assassin, boy, that was a, boy, that was something else there, brother. You took us on a, a journey right there, boy, and everything you said was right on the money, brother, because when you guys all know Mr. Controversy, one of my favorite topics to go into is the swirling Negro Ben Wentz ghetto gagger. And how many montages 
challenges have I done? And one of my famous award winners, as everybody knows, is the swirling Negro bear wench with the noose around her neck. Yeah, see, she's a, a, she's a noose necker. Yeah, noose necker, as my boy Blackbeard calls her, the Negro noose necker. And you, th- you talk about the Lifetime Achievement Award. I gave her the Lifetime Achievement Award because I said if if a, a disgusting creature like that can go on there with the history of her people and black men being lynched in trees and put a noose around her neck and go up there on video kissing the white man's ass, calling herself a nigger slut. And everybody out there heard and saw it for their own eyes, in front of their own eyes, and you heard what she said. And for all of you weak-ass black up man, what do you got to say about that? When you saw that bitch, that disgusting swirling bear wench with a noose around her neck, talking about she's a nigger slut, what do you got to say about that? You weak motherfuckers have nothing to say about that. When I tell you one thing, Mr. Controversy has a lot to say about it. And nobody gets a pass for being a disgusting, self-hating creature. Now, on to this, 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 this buyer's remorse. You got, I brought up earlier in the collaboration, I brought up that swirling bear wench who has buyer's remorse, who was sitting her ass outside that Chris Brown concert, crying her ass off, talking about black men are not checking for her. Well, it wasn't just non-black, it wasn't just black men that weren't checking for her. Nobody was checking for her. No non-black men or black men. And this is what we talk about, the buyer's remorse. All of a sudden, you have a metamorphosis. I remember seeing an old episode of The Incredible Hulk back in the 80s. And that and they had an episode with The Incredible Hulk. Matter of fact, I can use The Incredible Hulk as a perfect example. As everybody knows that follows The Incredible Hulk story, The Incredible Hulk is a normal man at first. And what happens is when he gets angry, as Mr. Controversy is an expert at that. When he gets angry, he turns into the Incredible Hulk, that green creature that tears motherfuckers apart. Now, that's the same thing that you have when you have a swirling Negro bear wench with buyer's remorse. She does a metamorphosis. And when she finishes her transition, all of a sudden now, just like Blackbeard said, she becomes a pro-black. Now, she's a militant pro-black, and I know my boy Blackbeard, we're going to definitely delve in to those damn pro-blacks, the militant pro-blacks. We're going to definitely get into their asses. But she becomes pro-black all of a sudden. And the reason she becomes pro-black is the psychology behind that whole track record of all of that disgusting ghetto bag of shit that she's done that now cannot be taken back. It cannot be taken back. And especially when they do shit like that in the, in the ghetto gangers platform and the social media platform, it's out there forever. And everybody out, out there knows when you put shit on social media, it's out there forever now. There's no way to go back. That chicken, is, that, that horse has left the stable. And the bottom line is all of a sudden now we got buyer's remorse because we let the, the white man take a, a, a pan full of vomit like Blackbeard was talking about. You let that white man take a pan full of vomit and dump it over your damn head. You let the white man put a dog leash on you around your neck and, and have you on all fours on the ground like a dog and walk you around the place with a cardboard sign on the front of you saying, I'm the white man slut. I'm a nigger slut. This is what you swirling Negro bear wedges have done. This is the disgusting shit that you participate in. And me and Blackbeard have both talked about the new generation slaves. The Tumblr, the Tumblr. All of these disgusting, and I've re- I seen it in a, uh, m- one of Blackbeard's most recent videos where he had the, the, the swirling Negro bear wedge, the Negro uh, noose necker with a, 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 a leash around her neck or a chain and she's sitting there like a dog, right, while the white man's sitting in the chair with the hole in the leash right there while she's sitting on, the, on, her, on her knees like a dog, waiting for a damn Scooby snack. This is the kind of disgusting.
disgusting creature that you weak ass son of a bitch black up man trying to defend. This is your queen that you try to defend. That while you were getting hanged and less than trees, she was in the damn plantation and in those shacks out there in the woods, ghetto gagging and every other disgusting thing that the white man wanted her to do. And that ties me back in to what Blackbeard was talking about earlier about that natural hair. I call it the slave, the ghetto gaggers is the slave reenactment. And what that means is you had black men for years and years and years fighting with black women about that fucking weave and that fake ass weave and taking that shit out of their head. And I found it so amazing that all of the battles that black men have had trying to get these sisters to wear their natural hair, fighting with them on social media platforms, wear your natural hair, wear your natural hair, we like your natural hair. And, the, and these damn sisters were telling these brothers, fuck that, I'm, I'm going to keep wearing my weave, I'm going to keep putting in all this fucking blonde weave and all this shit that black men can't stand. But oh, now, when the white man says, for his fetish, his slave reenactment fetish, when the white man wants you to wear your natural hair, oh, now you're going to wear your natural hair. The swirling bed witches, oh, now, we're going to wear our natural hair now because the white man wants us to do it. And every time me and Blackbeard talked about it in that last collaboration, we both saw two separate bed winches thousands of miles apart. He saw a bed winch on his side, I saw a bed winch on my side, and both of them had something in common. They both had their natural hair. And that, like he said, it's a costume that a swirling Negro bed winch wears. And that's a part of the costume. A part of that costume is their natural hair. And it's not that they want to wear their natural hair. No. No, 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 no. So you weak-ass black-up men who believe every fucking thing that you told, like they was raped all the time during slavery while they were ghetto-gagging voluntarily, don't even let me get into that shit. But you jackasses thought that, oh, she's wearing her natural hair because she wants to wear it. No hell, she's not. She's wearing her natural hair because the white man wants her to wear it that way so he can get his sick dollies off. So he can use her as a, a sexual fetish and reenact his master slave reenactment of slavery. That's why he wants them to wear their natural hair. For his sick ass, sick son of a bitch. And because of their self-hating asses, that's why they wear their natural hair. Because the white man wants them to wear it. And I thought it was telling, Blackbeard, when I thought about Crystal and Karen, I heard uh, Allie Emmett was talking about that situation where uh, her husband, she felt like, and a couple other people said it too, that they felt like her husband was the one that made her take that damn uh, beyond black and uh, white, made her take that damn swirling platform down. And I thought it was so telling, Blackbeard, that when the white man says, take the platform down, all of a sudden, here's a platform that's been up there for years. All of a sudden, when the white man says, take it down, your ass took that platform down. And I thought about all of the black husbands across this country arguing with, with these sisters that they married to. And getting all kinds of back, a back mouth and all that fucking rolling head and all that shit, that typical strong, independent prototype. Talking shit, back talking that black man, whenever he tries to get her to do something, she's gonna back talk him. And then I thought about this Queen B, the white man tells her to take that shit down, she took it down. But if it was so, a black man, this what I, if she was with a black man, and he would have told her to take it down, that shit would have been still up to this day. So what we're gonna do now is, is um, we basically on like 22 but 22 through 28 kind of all overlap. So what I'm going to do is, is um because you kind of hint, hinted at it already, but I'm going to read them and then I'm going to ask you a question and let you go in. So the first thing is this black on black crime, the hidden hand, black on black crime, why not the white woman, black porn ownership slash production distribution, 
black male operated offensive pornography genres, racist and abusive skits, porn, etc. Go in on that, brother. And what I want to ask you too, and what I want to ask you too is, is that um, what made you see beneath that veil on that black on black crime? Because I saw when you made your new page, that was like the first or second tape you made. So, what made you go in on that shit? What made me go in on it, Black Beard, was I kind of I, I noticed something, and I was saying to myself, all of these dumb motherfuckers out here can't see this shit, and you know, Black Beard, everybody out there knows that listen to Mr. Controversy, you know one of my famous cliches. Take that to a brother with a GED. Don't bring that shit to Mr. Controversy. Don't insult my intelligence. And when I saw that black on black crime, Black Beard, and I saw them. And all of a sudden, when I saw the black men all of a sudden doing ghetto gaggers tapes, I'm saying to myself, wait so, a minute, wait a minute. So let me ask you this. So the so the black men, they was doing the same stuff with like Confederate flags and all that? They didn't go, they didn't go that far. The black men, because like me and you both said, black men are not into disgusting shit like that. So black men did not do all them racial skits. And all that, them props and all that damn dog vomit and all that kind of shit like that. The black man was very tame. All the black man, it was just like a regular porn. Right. The only difference was that the black man might gag her or something like that. Or, you know, the black man would do regular sexual shit that I a see, black man would right, right. do. Right, I see what you're saying. But, when, but I found it telling when I saw the black man pop up all of a sudden. Right. And I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute, back that shit up. I said, now let my wheels went to turn in Blackbeard, and I started thinking to myself. I said, wait a minute, let me let me see. It's a hidden hand behind this. It's some, it's something behind this shit. And when Mister Controversy's intellect started turning around, I said, oh, I got it, I got it. I put that shit together in two seconds. Cause you know one of my other famous statements is I see through you motherfuckers like a plate glass window. And I saw through the white man like a plate glass window. What was happening was that motherfucker knew that there might be a small segment of self-hating Negro bear witches out there. And he knew that they was, they was fine with it. But he, they, the white man ain't that dumb. He knew that there's some down-ass blacks out here, too. And he knew there's some motherfuckers out there would, would, would have a backlash on this motherfucking ass. And he knew that was coming. A lot of these real pro-blacks, not them fake-ass motherfuckers that we gonna talk about. A lot of the real pro-blacks was gonna raise some shit. Some, some. So that motherfucker say, oh, oh, I gotta get ready for, I gotta, I gotta get myself, I gotta come up with a plan. I gotta come up with a plan that will curtail this backlash that these motherfuckers gonna call me racist. They gonna be saying, I'm doing all this shit to black women. I got to come up with a damn plan that can stop them in their tracks. So what does he do? Hey, I come, I got an idea. Why don't I create a ghetto gaggers and put some black men in there? Let me sprinkle a few niggas in there and have them ghetto gagging sister. So then I can go and say, wait a minute, black men are doing it too. <laughs> wow. Woo! I'm telling you, boy, the genius of Mr. Controversy. You motherfuckers out there, I'm going to tell you something. This is why the white man, this is why the racist son of a bitch is feared the alpha black man. Because we see through their ass like a plate glass window. You can't get that shit past us. You can get that past them dumb motherfuckers, them apes and savages out there, like the Michael Browns and all them motherfuckers out there in Ferguson, burning down their own shit. See, those are the apes and savages that'll fall into that damn spider web that I talked about earlier. Those are the apes and savages that'll be on child support. Those are the ones that'll go commit them crimes and get a felony on their record. Those are the ones that go do stupid shit. And the white man can lock his ass up for life. And, and I'm, I'm, I, you know, I've, I've been very honest with you guys about, you know, you know, one of the things that the white man had that he could have got me on, it's one thing that you guys all know that the white man could have got me in the spider web with. He could have got me good. And that was with my violent temper. 
man, he could have got me a life sentence several times. Luckily, because of, I got a spiritual family and people that pray, the, you know, the creator above made sure that I didn't kill one of these motherfuckers and end up doing that life sentence or two or three or four or five of them. And so that was the one weakness that Mr. Controversy had where I could have killed one of them motherfuckers and almost done it several times. And you all guys all know the story about the Miami police. You know, for quite some time, even when I went to college, I was waiting any day for those motherfuckers to show up. Come right in that damn classroom and say, Mr. Controversy, you under arrest for murder. Because of that motherfucker I dropped on the concrete in Liberty City. And choked this, fuck this man, don't even let me get pissed off. Let me just calm myself down. Now, back on this topic here. This damn white man said, you know, I got to come up with something to counteract that backlash. And that's how he sprinkled in them black dudes like they did with that bachelorette. Right. They sprinkled in a few damn black dudes in there to make it seem like it's always a hit in hand. And that's what they did. And they was that was a, a good plan because it obviously worked. But what the white man didn't count on was you got a black beer mirage and a Mr. Controversy out there. And so, what he didn't count on... So well, go, go go into go ahead, what I want to hear you go into now is is um the black males owning the porn and producing and distributing the porn now. That's what I was getting ready to go. Okay, to. bet. That's, that's exactly where I was getting ready to go, brother. Because me and Blackbeard talked about this in detail, and it was ingenious what we came up with. Because the white man, the one thing that me and Blackbeard kept seeing this continuing pattern, and we kept seeing. Every one of these skits that the white man comes up with, it has something to do with racial denigration. Denigrating and demeaning a person's race is all based on race. And what have you guys heard Mr. Controversy say a million times? The white man is race first. That's what he cares about. So given that premise, me and Black Bear came up with something interesting. We say, wait a minute here. Now, if every one of these skits, if he has a Latino girl, he gets a piñata and puts it up in the air and he gets her to take the stick and hit the piñata. If it's uh, the sister, he's going to put on a Confederate flag and he's going to put the noose on. So every nationality of minority, he gets a racial skit attached to it. So me and Blackbeard say, wait, wait a minute. Now, the white man, he's not only getting his dollies off by demeaning these people, he's profiting from it too because he owns the whole Ghetto Gaggers production. So while he's getting his jollies off, being a sick son of a bitch that he is, he's making money at the same time while he's getting his sick jollies off. So we thought about something. Me and Black Bear said, you know what? We know this motherfucker's greatest fear which goes back to that castration every time he wanted to castrate brothers and lynch brothers and all this shit. His, we know what gets, to the, what gets to the white man. What gets to him is his woman. And I told that story, Blackbeard, and I'm going to reiterate this story, how I was able to see the weakness in the white man. And I talked about when I was still working for the county, and before I punched out that damn supervisor, you guys all heard that story when I banged his head into the concrete and stormed out of there and broke the damn glass and and, and, and took my cell phone and splattered it against the wall. Bang. This is the same, yeah, this is the same uh, department. This was before that happened. And I remember when I told you guys, I said, yo, that was a skate job. That was an easy ass job. And all we used to do is park somewhere we might go and we'll do our work and then we'll be parked. We'll go park somewhere and you just be shooting the shit. Right. So at the time I had a fine ass sister, boy. Woo! Well, Mrs. Controversy's a fine ass sister. But you know, I don't put Mrs. Controversy pictures out like that. Right. But you know, it was in my young days, I was still a chick. So you know, I didn't give a fuck. I was a young, crazy ass Mr. Controversy. I didn't give a damn. So every damn sister that I'm fucking, you best believe. I had pictures, and I I was proud of it, boy. I was showing off them hips and ass and everything. So I, I bring a, a set of, I bring a set of pictures with me one day to work. So I think I took one of them out, and I'm 
like showing it off and shit because you know me, I'm, I'm a cocky motherfucker. So I'm showing it off, like look at this fine ass sister, and look at that shit. What you think about that motherfucker? Right. And that was kind of my yeah, that was my stance on. It. I'm like, look at that fine ass sister right there. What you gonna yeah. do about that? So I see the white man. You know he, you know, uh, the name his name was Glenn. I still remember his name. And Glenn, he was all in it. Well, whoa, man, look at that man. Look at that. And, uh, and, and Glenn is, you know, Glenn is a white man. And Glenn was like, man, look at that, man. That's, that is something else, man. And he was all in it, boys. He was all in it. And then I made a fatal mistake. <laughs> Going to it. Woo! Going to it. And that, that brings me in with my boy Blackbeard. Know where I'm going to go with this. Yep. That, I told, I told Glenn. I say, man, go show me a picture of your woman, man. Show, bring a picture, man. Uh, uh, let me see a picture of your woman, man. I'm gonna tell you, if looks can kill, I tell you, the look on his face and his reaction was priceless. Mm. It was priceless. That joker looked like somebody just killed his whole family. Wow! Wow! That joker, I'm telling you, talk about in his emotion. Wow! It was like the, the the reaction that he gave me was just like he pictured me in the bed fucking his wow, wife. Wow, man. That was, that was like he got the image of me immediately in the bed fucking his woman. And it just traumatized him. I mean, that motherfucker, man, he was butt hurt. Damn. I mean, he was, he was emotional. He was, I mean, that motherfucker. And I, you know, me. I am, I'm a, you know, I'm an intelligent motherfucker, so I'm like, all right, I see him, he all in his emotions and shit, so I ain't gonna push it no farther, you know. But that situation there stuck in my mind about the white man. And when you told me that, and when you told me that, man, like, that shit made me think and have flashbacks on those same kind of situations because, you know, like, like, I can just remember, you know, once again, it'd be me and some other brothers. You know, and it may be like little few little white boys we were playing basketball with or something. And and I remember we would be sitting there talking about our chicks, how they look, and all that different stuff. And once again, you know, they may see a picture of some, And, of course, it's this fine black woman. But I, I used to notice how intimidated they would get when we would talk about our women around them. And it would almost be like... Yeah. That's it. And I said, I know that if I take this motherfucker out... I'm going to have to stand before him, and I'm going to have to uh, uh, account for that. And I fear the creator. So I have to always keep my keep that in my mind. When I was young in my 20s, I didn't give a damn. I'm a book, whatever, whoever the fuck comes up, I'm going to kill his ass. I ain't going to even think about it. Which you say, you know all the stories behind that. Oh, yeah. When I was in my 20s, I didn't, even my, spiritual, my my spirituality couldn't even stop me then. I'm going to kill a motherfucker and think about that shit later. And like I said, any day I expected a motherfucker to come pop up. Mr. Controversy, we're going to put a murder charge on you. And back then, I would have told the motherfucker, let's go, motherfucker. I don't give a damn. You damn right I killed that motherfucker. Let's go. Lock me the fuck down. I had no remorse about it. And that's why I said with years, years ahead, like I am now in 2018. Now I got the ability to be able to check myself and to be able to keep myself on path because I, I said to myself, I have accomplished too much being a successful entrepreneur, having a business, got a wife, and I got a life. Right. So I said what I got to do is I got to try to do everything in my power to keep control to not kill one of these motherfuckers out here. And so that's what I think I did a pretty good job. When I looked at that motherfucker, Blackbeard, all I had to do was look at that motherfucker. When I looked at that motherfucker, he saw death in my eyes. And I said, if I was in my 20s, I would have killed that motherfucker. All I had to do was look at that motherfucker, and he saw the, 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 the fear. I saw that shit in his eyes. And after, until I got that across to that motherfucker that I will kill you, that's when I turned and I went on and proceeded up the road. But I wanted to get that point.
point across to that motherfucker without saying one word that mm -hmm. I will kill you. You mm -hmm. fucking with somebody who will kill you. I'm not the one to play with. And that motherfucker saw it. Let me calm myself the fuck down, boy. Because I'm just, I'm just, I've always, you know, my mom tells me, Blackbeard, my mom tells me I pray every day. She says I pray every day that you don't kill somebody out there. It's, it's that point to where she used to always, I remember through the years, she always had to keep checking up with me. Because she was in fear that I'm going to kill one of these motherfuckers out there. And I don't blame her. I don't blame her. If I was a mother, I would be in total fear if I had a son like me. Because mm -hmm. I know any day now this motherfucker's going to be doing a life sentence. Any day. But you know, back to these topics. Let me get myself back on track. Because that shit just took me out there, man. I just thought about that shit. You know, with these black up men, they're going to get butt hurt. You see, you put the proof right in their face. You, they see a Rachel Lindsay get on national TV and disrespect them choosing a white man right in front of their face. And then when you bring it up and you talk about it and put it right in their face, they're mad at you. They're upset and butthurt because you put the truth in their face. And when you talk about the WWE bear wench who disrespected them right in front of their fucking face, they're upset with you. And now I see what David Carroll was talking about when he was telling his stories about it. Because at first, I couldn't understand what he was talking about, Blackbeard. But after a while, when you start to get a following, and, and I talked about that in that Haters Make Us Make Us Famous video about them butter Cynthia G motherfucker. You know, when you get a certain following, you know this, Blackbeard, you know,
It's intelligent brothers like you that keep me doing what I do. That keep me motivated to do what I do. Because if you know what, Blackbeard? Although, like you said, most of these motherfuckers are black up males. But you got that small percentage of, of black males that we can reach. That small percentage of brothers who get it. Who see how he's being disrespected right in his face. And then I'm going to get back to what you were saying, Blackbeard, the, the transition into this topic about the secret lust of the alpha black male. You know what? You done made me, you done made me, guess what you did, Blackbeard? You done, you done brought some shit out now. I just thought about it. You know how we talk about the secret lust that the bed wenches have for us? Uh -huh. The alpha black male? You gonna make me go and look at the ghetto gaggers and I'm gonna do a comparison now. Because I just thought about something. I'm gonna prove the case. Hmm. You know, you know how we just, we talked about that lust that they, they, that they really wanted to be us. Right. I'm going to go and I'm going to look at both sides. I'm going to look at the ghetto gaggers when white men ghetto gaggers and I'm going to look at the sisters how they into it. I guarantee you because I noticed that it was a total difference in the way those sisters were when they was with those brothers. They was wow. into it. Oh, no, you mean on that, was, on that black on black thing? Yeah. Then oh. you could tell that there was a connection. Those sisters was into it when the black man was doing it to her. Wow. Was a white boy when the, the white boy when, when in the, the room? white boy doing it, you could just tell the white boys are totally not in the room. Wow. Or he could be in the room. Well, he yeah, might, yeah, he's I mean, not yeah. on camera. Exactly, exactly, exactly. He's not on camera, but you can see the difference. And I'm going to look at both sets again. Yeah, that would be interesting. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna look at it. Yeah, I, I want to see when you do your research on that what you gonna get because you, you know I'm gonna do my research. Yeah, you hitting on something? Cause I already told you I had that we had that theory about the alpha black male, and I was thinking about something. I said, wait a minute, it seemed like them sisters was really emo like they had an emotional tie to the black male, like a natural tie, like they felt like they were at home with wow. the black man. So you can see how they was really into it. But then with the white man, you can tell it was all manufactured and it was like, you know, they were just passing the time because of their self-hate. Right, right. You can tell the, the money. difference. And then the, and then and the money. And the money. Yeah, so yeah, I see exactly what you're saying. Oh, yeah. So stay tuned. Yes. Yeah, uh, everybody out there, when Mr. Controversy finishes re his research, you guys know that I'm going to put the links I'm going to do a video on it, and I'm going to put the links in it after I do my research. Because you know I like to put my receipts behind. I put my money where my mouth is. Yeah, because you be getting them with the montage, so. You you know, the, like, like the boy Blackbeard, you know, Blackbeard knows that I'm the king the of master, the montage. The master of the montage. And so I'm a transition to what Blackbeard was saying. Blackbeard wanted me to go into some of these, few of these topics that I had brought to the table. So, um, I'm going to bring up something that I found pretty interesting. And I just love it, man, when when I put stuff on the table and you see it come back to fruition and they prove you right, I just love to gloat. You know that, Mr. You know that, uh, uh Blackbeard, I love to gloat. <laughs> and this is one of the situations, man, I just got to gloat. You know, uh, I, everybody out there, you know new possibilities. And you guys know... I went in on that new possibilities and torn his ass in the shreds for being a weak ass simp. Now, I told new possibilities the same thing that I told that damn Chrissy and that damn weak ass feel from that vice show. When you try to play nice with these bad witches, do you think that they're going to play nice with you when you have a platform that's a pro-black platform that's diametrically opposed to what they're doing. The bad witches want the exact opposite of what you guys are pushing. They want the genocide of the black race. Right. And they want the black man eliminated from society. Right. That's what they want. And so you guys think that by getting on your platforms and totally ignoring the bad witches, oh, I'm not going to talk to them. I'm not going to address them like Mr. Controversy or Blackbeard. I'm not going to address them. You think that that's going to make them run away and leave you alone? Hell no. 
because as you guys know, everybody out there know that we got a beef going on right now with the successful Bear Winch Live and Simone Monkey 56 and Crystal and the Queen B. And everybody's seen them videos that I put out there on that topic. And this just shows you that the swirling bear winches will actually go after one of their own. And what's that term, Blackbeard? Uh, it eats its own, eats its young. Oh, they will go yeah. after their own kind. Mm. They will kill their own kind. So what does that say about a new possibility? What does that say about a field for the advice show? And so when you think uh, everybody's out there like, well, what are you, uh, what, uh, what are you talking about, Mr. Controversy? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. For those of you out there that don't know, New Possibilities did a video, is a recent video, and he was all butthurt talking about apparently the swirling bear which is the went and called his job and tried to get him fired from his job. <laughs> wow. Woo! I'm going to tell you, man, I just hate, you know, I, I can't say I hate the gloat because I love it. I love the gloat when I say I told you so. That weak-ass new possibilities thought that if he simps, if he be, be a simp, that they not going to come out his ass. And sure enough, those motherfuckers came out his ass to try to get him fired from his job. <laughs> and you guys out there, you can see it for yourself. You go check out that new possibilities and listen to them butter because they went to the swirl and bear went just went to try to get him fired from his job because he said that he don't agree with the swirling. And I thought it was just poetic justice. And then that leads me to the next gloating that I'm going to do too, Blackbeard, the next simp that I talked about, still from the advice show, here's another simp that his chickens came home to roost exactly how I said it was going to do. The same with New Possibility. Phil from the advice show, as you guys know, I tore him in the ass, his ass in the shreds several times about the Queen Bee coming on his platform, disrespecting him, and Cynthia G., I've, I've torn his ass apart about that. And the part that I found amazing was, guess what ended up happening? Because he didn't call out the swirling bear which is he was afraid of them. But guess what ended up happening? Two of the bear winches came after him. The queen bee came after his ass. And the successful bear winch lies, who are both at each other's throats right now, warring with each other. That's, guess what they did before they got into their war with each other? They made videos, both of them, talking shit about Phil Front Advice Show because he married a Latino, a Latino chick with two kids. And so they called them a hypocrite. I thought that was so telling. There you got swirling Negro bear wedges calling, <laughs> a, a, calling the Phil Front Advice Show a hypocrite. <laughs> It is funny as hell, but it's but it, but you know what's interesting to it that there's not much he's gonna really be able to say because they don't care that you're gonna say that he's that they bed winches or swirlers like they ain't gonna really care about that. So, but it's just the mere fact that it, it goes to what we always say, man. You know, and I heard David Carroll talk about this. It's like if if you're not standing on your own square and your and your and your closet isn't cleaned out. Then you know you're gonna be called out about some shit, and, exactly. and, that's, and that's how these exactly. people are. It's like when you, especially when you dealing with, it's like that's why I always expose my own self and the things that that's are right. about Black Bear Mirage that are not perfect in his childhood, in his that's psyche, right. in his emotion. I tell y'all about that shit because I'm gonna be a hundred with y'all. For any motherfucker listening to this shit, if you try to like dox me and put some information out. The first thing is, is that the people are already probably are going to know about it. And the second thing is, is this, like, I'm going to take that shit real serious. Like, it's going to be to a point where, like, like I'm going to take that shit real serious, man. Like, I'm going to take that, I'm going to take that shit real serious. You know what I'm saying? What? Because, um, because even with, you know, people like, like, and that's another thing too. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't condone the whole, let's say, putting somebody else's kid 
or somebody's spouse or family member. I don't I don't really put them into stuff because because honestly, the way I'm used to things when when beef gets real hot and a person that you beefing with, they try to evade you and they duck you and dodge you. You, you know, the, the the protocol is, is that you start attacking people's family members. Now, now, that's to me. Now, that's the most deepest level of some real shit. That's not no YouTube shit to me, period. So, you know, when you start putting that's people, why, Yeah, man. Yeah, that's why New Possibilities was all but hurt. And the thing about it, going back to what you were saying before, Blackbeard, was when you tell the truth, that's the difference in what they say all the time. When you tell the truth, you don't have to worry about shit coming back or skeletons being in a fucking closet. Because like everybody out there know, you know, Mr. Controversy, it is what it is. I don't give a damn that I tried to fuck people up. I put it out there. And it's the real deal, and that's the fucking truth. And I don't give a damn about it. It's out there, good or bad. And that's what I always say to people. You can respect a motherfucker that tells you straight up, I don't like you. If somebody tells you straight up that they don't like you, you can respect that. But the one thing that you can't stand is like I did in one of them videos. Remember that video, uh, Blackbeard, where I put the OJs in there, the black stabbers? Uh-huh. They smile in your face, and yep. all the time they want to take your place? Yep. See, those are the kind of motherfuckers that you can't stand. And with a feel for the advice show, when you are a simp like that, this is the kind of simp who was able to be embarrassed and exposed for being a fake-ass son of a bitch. And I'm going to tell you, so it ties in what, what all the time with what these motherfuckers don't realize. Those swirling bad winches, they might not like to hear when we tell them about their self and we expose all this shit out in the open, but late at night, that, 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 like on Jungle Fever when that, that preacher said on a hotbed of lust, they thinking about a black beer mirage. They thinking about Mr. Controversy. They turned the fuck on. And they, they're saying to themselves, damn, them motherfuckers, and the same with the Queen Bee, the same with Simone Monkey 56, the same with all of them motherfucking swirlers. It's funny, they be saying yeah, that they, shit true because it, with, 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 with one of those women you named, it seemed like every time she got in hot water, she come calling for us, but it's like, I thought you didn't even That's like That's right. Us. That's right. The Queen Bee, matter of fact. The Queen Bee is the one that you talk about. The Queen Bee, it said two times. She said, the first time was in that veganator situation where she looked like a jackass crying on, on social media because she got embarrassed by that veganator. And the first thing that came out of her mouth was the black man, and you guys heard me put a clip of what she said. When she said the black man, uh, she thought that black men wasn't that awful, but they are that awful and they are that disgusting. I put a clip of that in, the, in, in my montage. And what she was talking about was she was expecting black men to come to her rescue. And when the black men didn't come to her rescue, she said that they are awful and they're disgusting. Then, with the Flint Town Boy situation popped off, which just happened. And she said that she expected black men, she was all butter because black men didn't come to her rescue going after Flint Town Boy. And I thought it was so telling how ain't this the group of men that you built an entire platform to denigrate and disrespect? This the, the men that you divested from Blackistan? But you expect this same group of men to come to your rescue. And that reminded me of that bear winch on that, that one video I did, the one bear winch that got punched in the eye by her, by that young white dude. And then that brother was over there with that white girl. And then she was trying to get him to, to say some disrespectful shit to the black dude. So the black dude, cause she saw that brother was about 300 pounds. And that white dude, he was probably about, probably 70 pounds soaking wet. So she was like, oh, this brother will destroy his ass. So, she tried to get him. She's like, why don't you call him a nigger? Why don't you go call him a nigger? Trying to get the black man to come and beat him up for her. <laughs> and that goes back to what Blackbeard said and what I say. What they secretly want. See, this whole swirling thing, I say this all the time. I see through you motherfuckers like a plate glass window. What this is all about 
is that you are butthurt because of these brothers who got sick of dealing with your stink-ass attitudes and chose to opt out. So you got butthurt with that brother because he wasn't going to deal with that shit. And he say, fuck this, I'm going to go deal with some other woman. So now you create this swirling movement to try to make him jealous. To try to make him think that he's losing something. But I, I totally destroyed and dismantled that shit with that OK Cupid survey. Those non-black men, you are not his standard of beauty. He does not want you swirling Negro bed with you. So, so let me ask you, so let me ask you this. So, what else? Um, because that basically um hit at that part. So, what else you got? So we can get ready to um transition to okay. a closing. Okay. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, this is a good one. This goes into what you were talking about. What you wanted to jump in on the pro blacks, the militant pro blacks. And I saw the heat that you brought to them motherfuckers in that video. Yeah, basically um, you can um you can kind of drop what you got on them because they can go and oh, yeah. they can go and watch that tape because I ain't got nothing yeah. for them niggas. like you know them, them, I, they ain't got nothing for them niggas man. Well, you know, as all of you know by now, if if for those of you who have not seen that damn masterpiece that I dropped about that so called pastor on that damn pulpit, that woman pastor, you know, all of you are familiar with that Robin per Robert Perkins. And he did a video not too long ago about this uh, this woman pastor, this sister. And she made a statement saying that uh, about slavery was, uh, it was a good thing that slavery happened. And she's coming up with all of her reasons of why slavery was a good thing. She was, she benefited from slavery. And when Robert Purchase was a prime example. I couldn't, you know, you know when they serve that ball to me, Blackbeard, you know I got to hit it. You know I got to take that bat and knock it out the ballpark. I'm sitting there waiting to see what this brother going to do about it. I'm going to see if he going to catch this. So this brother goes and talking about the Bible. And I'm saying to myself, uh-oh, uh-oh, let's see what he do. He's going to talk about the Bible. Let's see if he gets to that first Timothy. This joker went and missed the whole boat. This joker jumped on talking about the slavery and the history of slavery and all this. And I'm saying to myself, is this brother serious? Is he that weak and pussified? And you know I had to go in on that motherfucker because the first thing crossed my mind is, here you go, this sister sitting up on a damn pulpit calling herself a damn pastor. That was the first thing. And... I'm saying to myself, if you're going to use the Bible, the first thing that should have came through your black up men's ass <laughs> is the fact that she should have been the fuck on that pulpit in the first place. <laughs> because it clearly states in First Timothy, she's not supposed to be preaching up on a pulpit. <laughs> that motherfucker get me fucking heated. I can't stand these weak son of a bitches. And I'm going to tell you something, Blackbeard. He could not address us because he did not have the ball. I'm going to tell you something about that motherfucker. And I'm talking to you, Robert Person. If you hear me the fucking what I'm saying right now, you pro black, uh, let me tell you something. You knew damn right about First Timothy. You knew about that verse. But you didn't have the balls to throw that sister out and tell her the truth. You didn't have the balls to call her out. So you went the weak power way and talk, started talking that bullshit about slavery. Get the fuck out of here with that. Because unlike you, Robert Burgess, I got the ball to call any of them motherfuckers out. That's what the fuck you should have been talking about. Her being on that fucking pulpit. Because the Bible states that she is not supposed to usurp authority. She is not supposed to teach nor usurp authority over the man. She's supposed to be in silence. But your weak ass could not do it. You couldn't call her. You didn't have the balls to call her out. And this is the problem with you weak ass Black up men. This is why your woman has no respect for your black asses. Because you're too weak to call them on the carpet. And I'm going to tell you motherfuckers something. And you black up men are going to hear me carefully. I'm going to tell you something that you don't know about sister. And I've stated this in previous videos. At the end of the day, and black beer know what I'm saying is the truth. At the end of the day, black females are women. It is the same as any other race of woman. And the one thing that they respect 
I'm taking a look at this lethal lady. This motherfucker had 15 views, 40 views. And I'm saying to myself, you making all of these damn videos, kissing these damn, uh, kissing these sisters' ass, and they don't give a damn about your weak ass. You know who they paying attention to? They paying attention to uh, the Mr. Controversy. They paying attention to Blackbeard Mirage. They paying attention to Kid Organic. David Carroll. A crazy. They paying attention to the brothers who are the alpha males who have the balls to call them the fuck out. Because we are the men who they know will protect them if shit goes down. We are the killmongers. That's what sisters want. That's what they respect. They do not respect you Robert Perkins motherfuckers, you feel for the vice shows, you new possibilities, they do not respect you lethal ladies and all the rest of you weak son of a bitches, <laughs> you Angel and Maris Jordans, all you motherfuckers. They don't respect you. And don't you understand that they do not respect your weak asses? You new possibilities? You see what the fuck I'm saying now? Now your weak ass, they don't went to try to get you fired from your job. And you know why they did that? Because you're a weak son of a bitch that didn't have the balls to call them out. And they felt like you are an easy target. Because they know that if they come after the man, if they come anywhere near, because you had a few of those motherfuckers tried in the past. You had that, that, that boy, that bitch, I forgot what that bed went to, Vanessa West and all the rest of those motherfuckers, they tried. Lord Lucifer, all of those trolls. And they all fell down. You can see the carnage that Mr. Controversy left behind. <laughs> I destroyed every single... And what's that other motherfucker from Black Junction? That damn uh, William Brim. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you something, William Brim, if you were listening to my voice. I told you in your motherfucking face that you were a weak-ass black man. And I said that in your face. And you are a weak son of a bitch. You are the very black up man that I talk about. But hurt. Because I'm talking about ghetto gaggers. And you calling them your black queens. Wow. This is the type of weak son of a bitch that I'm talking about. The black queen with a noose around her neck. Some queen. Talking about she's a, a, a nigger slave. Some queen. That's a black queen. That's a queen. Wow. I'm going to tell you something, motherfucker. I'm going to tell you something, William Brim. There's some down sisters out there in the world that are true queens. It's just a few of them. And they actually, and, and, they hate, and they hate niggas like him. And they hate weak son of a bitches like you. Weak beta male black men like you. Trying to defend ghetto gaggers. Trying to defend scandal. Trying to defend Serena Williams, disrespecting her father, who taught her how to play tennis on the streets of South Central Los Angeles. While shots was going off in the air, that brother tried to teach them how to play tennis. And she'd get on national TV and disrespect that man. The same with that Queen Bee. She told a story that a lot of people have heard her tell that story. And she has said it herself, that she had a good black man as a father that took care of his family and raised her up to be a balanced individual. He was a good black man. And what did she do? Created an entire platform and called it swirling and disrespected her father. And that's why I call her and the rest of her ilk disgusting creatures. Now let me get to one more topic, Blackbeard, and we'll wrap it up, brother. I had to get that damn Robert Perkins because that shit don't fly with me. Sitting up here and got the nerd to to, to bring the Bible up. He wouldn't have got his ass torn apart had he not brought the Bible up. But when he brought that up and that motherfucker left sat there and didn't have the balls to call her out on that damn pulpit, calling herself a pastor, that shit pissed me the fuck off. The same as that damn boy who told his mother that he wanted a cat. That shit pissed me the fuck off. I wanted to take my damn TV and put it off the wall. A damn boy talking about he want a cat. Get the fuck out of here, motherfucker. I grew up around pit bulls. And I told that story, Blackbeard. That, that, that story touched you. That I told you about my uncle. And that pit bull fight. And he talking about he want a damn cat. Get the fuck 
out of here. Weak son of a bitch. <laughs> Let me see. It's the last topic here that I wrote down here. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, they get me. You know, I'm telling you, Blackbeard. These motherfuckers, man. You know, when I was in corporate, I'm going to tell just a quick little thing, man. I told you that story when I blew up in that damn corporate office that time. Mm-hmm. One thing that motherfuckers learn about Mr. Controversy, I am not for show. The the same intensity that I bring them to these videos, I will hurt you. You everybody listening to my voice out there, I am not for show. I will hurt you for real. I will hurt you. I will jump on you for real. And when I was in corporate America, a lot of those people heard a few of the stories about my temper. But one day, unfortunately, they had to experience it in person. And it was some situation where I told the owners of the company, I was a think, CFO at that time, and I was running the operation. And I told these motherfuckers, these owners of the company, do not make this decision, else you're going to cause the company to lose a half million dollars or more. And would you believe, Blackbeard, these motherfuckers overrided my decision and went ahead and made that decision? And you know what ended up happening? They ain't losing money. Oh, no. Those motherfuckers, not only did they lose a half million, Damn. they lost upwards of $1.5 million. Wow. And if you're the CFO, that's what your job is. You're the one that's making all the accounting decisions, so why the hell, why, why wouldn't they listen? I, you know, they said, and, and, and the thing that got me when they did that shit, I blew the fuck up. Yeah. And they... And I didn't realize what I did until, like, a lot of the people had told me what had happened. I saw red. I was so fucking pissed off. All I knew was I picked up something, a desk or something, and I threw that shit against the wall. And I splattered that shit up against the wall, and I, I remember being outside. The next thing I knew, all I know was outside punching a concrete wall with my fist like it was a person. I was punching the fucking wall. I was so fucking angry. That's all I remember. And I remember everybody storming out a lot of the people that was in my inner circle. A lot of people trying to calm me down. I remember that. This is a true story. And it was on, it was kind of on the, on the second floor or some shit like that. And I remember punching the fucking wall and everybody coming out trying to calm me down and punching the fucking wall. I was pissed the fuck off. I'm going to tell you something. One thing that everybody knew from that day forward. That I am nobody you want to play with. I will hurt you. I will jump on somebody. And in that case, they better be lucky that it wasn't a person. Because usually, it'll be a fucking person that I'm jumping on. And that was a story that happened in the corporate office. And I'm telling you, man, that's one thing I'm not about show. Unlike that fucking weak-ass feel from the advice show with all them fucking skeletons in this fucking closet because he's been a fake. One thing I, I state all the time, Blackbeard, is that when people do movies, I'm, I'm against having actors doing movies. You know I'm against that, Blackbeard? Hmm. I'm against that. Because when I think about a womanizer, if you got a part of a womanizer, and you, you're going to play a part of a guy that loves women, and he's a woman chaser like I was in the court, you're going to get the person that's going to make that part come to life is a person that lived it for real. A person that's a real womanizer. That's the type of person you want to find to act that part because he's being himself. That's what's going to make it come across the screen because he's being real. And that's the purpose why they should put real people that have the actual real traits of what you're trying to act, the part that you're trying to act. And I'm against actors. I'm against them. I'm, I want you to put real motherfuckers in there. If you got a police, if you got a part that requires a police, get a real police and get them to act that part. That shit gonna come across the screen for real. I'm not about that fake shit. That's why I hate that fucking WWE shit. Yeah, yeah. Blackbeard. Yeah. I hate that fake ass shit. <clears throat> because... I like, I like the, when they talk about wrestling, I look at college.
college wrestling, the the the, the Division One championships, mm-hmm. be, because that's real yeah, wrestling. That's real wrestling, yeah. And the only person that I know, one of the persons that came from real wrestling, a real wrestling background, which is probably why he was at the top the way he was, the Hall of Fame, Ric Flair. Ric Flair was a Division One champion before he went into that fake shit. See, but he was a real wrestler. Mm-hmm. Unlike all them other motherfuckers out there, these fake asses, he was a real wrestler. Mm-hmm. And you can respect that. That's why my sport of choice is the UFC. Mm-hmm. Because of the simple fact that I came from real violence, I like real violence. I don't like fake shit. I like to see motherfuckers getting punched in the eye for real. I like to see them getting beat down on the ground for real. I like to see that, because that's all I know is rawness. And you know, if I had it my way, you know, I would take a lot of shit out of that UFC and take it back to how it was when it first began. More streetish. You know, I take them fucking gloves off. I don't like that shit either. I wanted to be bare knuckles. I wanted to go back to where it was before. You know, where it wasn't no weight classes. You can go in that motherfucker at 170 pounds and have to fight somebody 300 pounds. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking That's a real fight. You know, I like the way fuck these rounds and all that shit. You just let motherfuckers, you just go in there and say, time to fight. And motherfuckers just go in there and just throw hands. That's what I like. I would have took all that wrestling shit out of it. I would have been like, fuck this wrestling. Take all that out of it. You just go in there and fight. That's the way I would do the UFC if I did it. But you know what? I got to deal with the fact that you got a lot of these black up men and these butthurt weak motherfuckers who can't handle real violence. So, you got, you know, you got to put the gloves on. You got to put the rounds on. You got to have a referee stopping fights. You know, when I see a motherfucker get beat down on the ground, and I've seen it so many times, the ref will stop the damn fight early, I'd be pissed the fuck off. And the crowd would be pissed off, too, because they wanted to see that motherfucker keep getting beat down. What the fuck? If he getting his ass whooped, let him keep getting his ass whooped. You don't have to kill the motherfucker. Let him get beat, to, you know, enough to where the motherfucker's unconscious or something. Now you can go ahead and pick his ass up off the ground. But, you know, I like to see a real ass beat now. But that's what the fuck I know. But these cupcake motherfuckers in this society, man, I just can't, I can't get with that. But, but yeah, man, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just making sure I got, Okay, this was just the, the little fast, last little portion here, Blackbeard. I saw a video from Zerla, and I just had, I'm going to do a video on this. You guys know how it's going down. I did a, I saw a video, and I didn't even tell you about this one, Blackbeard, but this is raw for you. She did a video about African people. This African lady did a post or something, and she says she is not black. She is not one of you. She says, I am not one of you. And Zerla, I, sh- I sent you the, the video. Zerla was going off on that motherfucker. And I'm saying to myself, this is what I'm talking about when you get the Nigerian skin bleaching and all of this self-hate. You would think that in any place on this earth that you would have the most down, the most proud blacks on the earth, you would think it would be in the motherland. You would think that would be where you would find the blacks that have so much self-worth, so much pride in being black, so much pride in their melanin. You would think that that would be the place in the motherland. But contrary to that, that's the place with the most self-hate. That's the place with the billion-dollar self-hate, the, the, the bleach, skin bleaching industry. And everybody out there, you saw that montage that I put, and I put that, that African lady bleaching her skin, singing a song while she's bleaching her skin, like, you know, having fun with it. And I, I mean, the thing that Zola pointed out in that video, do these African people and these blacks from these Caribbean countries that talk shit about American blacks, do they not understand that white supremacy sees their ass as black? Do they not understand that? They try to make it seem as though they're different. Do they think that they're different? Well, I think honestly, um, 
you know, just kind of give my little two cents on that real quick. You know, you got two, you got two, two ways to really view that being in a stable mind. They could be saying either, A, I'm not black as far as, you know, I don't identify with being an indigenous person of the earth. I don't, I don't identify with, you know, the natural God given features that I am. I don't identify with my skin tone naturally, et cetera. They could be saying that, which is what I would consider real self hate. You know, or sometimes they may be even saying that I'm not black as far as that label, because a, a lot of those people that, that live on that continent, they them people come from a, na- a nation. So they may say I'm Nigerian. I'm, I'm you know, I'm from Algeria, et cetera. But they don't really do that whole color code thing over there. That's really some more United States, Western America type shit. So, you know, I don't really know what angle they may have been coming from, but it sounds like it may have just been more of the self hate. But, but, you yeah, know, they were on that angle. That, that, that's right? what pissed her off. That's what pissed yeah. her off. Because they I, was coming from a self hate angle. I think even a lot of that, I think even with a lot of that, though, like, it's like people, like, like when I talk about the Negro bed stench and all that stuff, what I try to do is I try to make it educational. Because, you know, at the end of the day, as me and you both know, because you even spoke about it earlier on how a lot of those brothers in the comment section hit you up and they um you see the growth in their 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 conscience. But, you know, this is who I'm really doing this shit for. Like, I don't give a fuck about these people that got this self-hate and all this stuff. I, I really if I talk about that shit, it's going to be to inform the people exactly. that's on our side of the fence about, let's say, certain things regarding exactly. that phenomenon, you know. And exactly. yeah, and, and when I see a lot of people with those colorism arguments, and and really even a lot, even a lot of shit we talk about, like it's it's still from the angle almost like they're looking at their viewers and subscribers as the people that they're talking about, and it's not more mm-hmm. so like they're talking with them; they're talking at the people. Exactly. You know. And you know what, Black Mirror? I have noticed this myself, and and I'm gonna tell you something, Black Mirror. Me and you never got into this particular topic. Yeah. But I have went off on motherfucking Caribbean blacks through the years. I have went off on several of them motherfuckers through the years. And I've heard that statement from several of their mouths through the years. That's why when Zerla said that, I knew exactly what the fuck she was talking about. Because I've heard some of these Caribbean blacks come over here talking shit about, uh, especially the females. I don't know, what is it with this fucking self-hate with these damn chicks or sisters? I don't know what the fuck the problem. Damn. Now, now that I think about this shit, that's the only place I remember hearing it from. Talking this shit about, oh, uh, African-American men, you can see it on YouTube. You can see some of them on YouTube. Uh, we don't, we would never date an African-American man. And I'm saying to myself, what the fuck you think you are? Who, you think you white? Do you think the white society sees you as white? And John made a good point, Blackbeard. When they try to make it to where, well, I'm from Jamaica. I'm from Bahamas. I'm from Virgin Islands. I'm from Trinidad. I'm from here. I'm from this place. Do they do they not understand that they're going to get their nigga wake-up call? That the one thing black, the white, the white society sees their ass as black. When that racist son of a bitch cop pull their ass over, that racist son of a bitch don't give a damn that you're from Trinidad. They don't give a damn that you're from Nigeria. They don't give a damn that you're from uh, Jamaica. They don't give a damn that you're from Haiti. All they see is black. That's it. I know one thing. I know one thing. I saw um, a video the other day, and this shit is on point. This whole colorism shit, this whole swirling, all that interracial shit and all that, that shit is drying up, and even the topic is getting old. Because when you really even listen to them people, man, them, them, these people can have hundreds of tapes. But all their tapes is about the same shit. And see, and that's something that I also try not to do when people come to my page. Like, I try not to bore these people. Like, you know, you got to give these people something different, man. Like, this shit got to be switched up. Because that's a fact. Like, when, when people come to my shit, they don't know what the hell they finna hear. They don't know, I like, agree. you know, and, and it's like, and I do that shit on purpose like that because, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, it, it, it's almost like, like I said, it's like, you, you, they'll be on the taste just repeatedly saying this same shit, and it's like, you don't even realize that the people you talking to, these people support your movement, like, these, these supposed to be the people you, you know, you transitioning into this world 
minus this bullshit you claiming you don't even like. And when yeah, I'm listening, I to agree these, with that. You know what I'm saying? And when I listen to they sh- they, they stuff is like, I don't see. I don't see the transition and solution. Like where it's like where's the shit going? Like that's maybe my whole. Yeah, that's a good point, right you know now. What I'm like where? Okay, you swirl and all, but it's like where's it going? Like I, and more so yeah, in particular with those now. those two movements. Like where's that shit really supposed to go? Like you know what you know? the thing about it, Blackbeard, is the goal is the humiliation of the black man and the elimination of the black yeah, man. Well, that, that shit, that shit and, ain't finna happen. And it's never gonna happen. That shit ain't finna happen, happen, man. That shit ain't finna happen. I'm sorry, it's not. And, and much that as they happen. try and just see this, this world, this delusionary world that they have thinking that one day the black man is gonna be wiped off the planet and we're gonna be free to, to see all the white men we want and, and the white man want us so bad. And I say to myself, after debunking that whole bullshit with that OK Cupid survey, I say to myself, you know, these are the most delusional, self-hating creatures on the planet Earth. And the one thing I see about them is that, like with the Queen Bee, she might have took down that damn channel, but she ain't going to stop. That's and those, those like, swirling no, red ones, they're not going to stop. There's no end to it. It's like, I, I'm going to be honest with you, too. Like something in the world of the of the world of spirituality, the occult that they, that, that that that's kind of taught is is that when you don't pay something attention, it really is not going to really exist anymore like that. And I'm telling you, what I really see, man, it's like that shit just is getting old. Like people out here, these folks out here are starting to wake up, man. And it's like this little appetizer food that they putting in people's minds. This shit ain't sticking with people no more, man. Especially these so called black people. Like, they gonna need some it's real, you gonna have to drop some real information on these people, some real history, you know what I'm saying, or some real something. Because when I see them, when I see them tapes, it seems like they don't be nothing but articles or certain social current events that happened that they use to reinforce like an argument. But it's not, yeah. it's not really on a conveyor belt transitioning nowhere. It's like even when you had a Ford plant. On the conveyor belt, you're going to see the body of the car. Then it goes down and you get the tires put on. Then it goes down and you get the engine put in. So we're at the end of it. You see this full car. But, and when I do my shit, that's how I'm positioning it. It's like, my shit is a conveyor belt. When I put information out, people are going to take that and they can build upon that in their personal life and see the growth. But let's say with colorism or swirling, it's like, what's the end goal? Because, and then even with the whole swirling thing, you're not you're not gonna make nobody date you. Like I said in the previous exactly. tape before. Exactly. This shit ain't about it ain't about you telling white men all of a sudden now we available to y'all and, and, and we've been rejecting y'all all this time and now all of a sudden like these all these white boys just been sitting outside of this door just piling up and lining up waiting to talk to you. These men been going on with their fucking lives and they gonna always do it. Nobody's been sitting around waiting to fucking talk to you and you done gave them the A OK now to, to go in on them. It's like Man, these niggas is moving on with their lives like they're going to continue doing. And you know what's, what's interesting? I guarantee you through this whole interracial propaganda and all this shit, the swirling numbers haven't really increased that much. It's been the same swirling in the 40s, the 60s, the 80s, and even in 2030. It's going to always be that same low 9% or whatever. Like That shit going to fluctuate up and down, no different than the NASDAQ. And that shit you see on CNBC every day for my people that know they financial analytics. That shit ain't going to go too much higher or too much lower. It's like, it's not a natural phenomenon. Cheetahs don't fucking sleep with zebras. I mean, it just doesn't go like that. Like, you're never going to see a spike in the number. It's not going anywhere. You know, you're never going to see cheetahs all of a sudden putting fucking turtles on their beauty magazines. That's not going to happen. And that's what I'm seeing with the colorism. They want these other people to put them on a pedestal, no different than the swirl thing. It's like, and it's not going anywhere. Like, it's you not. You know what, Blackberry? You said a mouthful, brother, because that clip that I put of Zola in one of them videos just proved the point that you just made that their numbers are not moving. And they're sitting here advertising because, uh, 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 no, no, it was Verita's. Yeah. It was Verita's. I put a clip of Maria, and she said the exact same thing that you just said. She said that black men, remember that video thing with what she was saying, black men don't have to change the way they talk. We don't have to change nothing about us, and we're winning. 
And you know what? And I'm gonna drop and I'm gonna drop this shit and ain't nobody ever said this shit. You wanna know why the swirling shit really won't move? Because at the end of the day, majority of black women know they can't leave black men. It's no different than a white female. You know why that white female won't 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 publicly do certain things and be seen with that black male? The same way how she fears getting cut off from her economic white supremacy. To be honest with you, black men may not have no economic system right now, but our nature and what we are as natural beings, black women really not trying to be cut off from that. And that's simply why the shit not going to work. See, I don't go for that propaganda that, oh, all the black women with the white boy and oh, all the black men with the... Like, people that... That's that emotional bullshit of motherfuckers that don't watch way too much TV. Like, the reality uh -huh. is, is that people sticking with their own folks. And that that's shit is real. not going to work. Like, any nigga out here trying to convince all black men to leave black women and start dealing with white women, that shit's not going to work. And any swirl are trying to convince black women to in mass leave black men, that shit's not going to work. People are not going to do that shit. That well, shit is not. so... Like, I remember reading something even in biology to where when a man and woman have a child, we don't even realize that the serotonin and all these different hormones that are being secreted from the pituitary gland and the glands in the brain actually keep these families biologically together. There are certain hormones in that secrete in the human body that are between the male father, the female mother, and then the child. It's, it's no different. It's like when a child sees their parent come in the room, you ever notice a little baby start clapping and smiling? It's like it's certain hormones in the human brain that, that keep certain species together. It's like you bitches are trying to go against the most high. You're not going to win this shit. Like people are naturally, this white boy is supposed to be with his white woman. Like I said, when I see these super attractive white women, they're supposed to be with the attractive white males. That's how that goes. When you, see the, when you see the male lion, the strong male lion that weighs 900 pounds, that's the biggest one in the fucking jungle, I guarantee you he's going to be with the most alpha female lion. Like me, that's right. That's just how the fucking shit go. Like, and I don't know, and all this abnormal, unnatural shit. It's like I don't know. I just got nothing but vitriol for it now, cause all the history and all that shit, it's been dropped. We know about the history, but it's to a point now. Like you hoes just need to be killed, and you black up men, y'all need to be put straight on the fucking guillotine and taken out. Cause it's like, what else we gonna explain to y'all? How much more books can I really give y'all about that shit? You know, it's amazing, man. Well, Black Bear, you said, well, you went in on them, boy. And, and what everything you said was right on the money, brother, because at the end of the day, your numbers, you swirling bed wenches, your numbers are not moving. It's just not. The oh, black, yeah. like black Bear said that everybody's going to follow nature. At hard. the end of the day, the white man, and, and listen to me carefully. All you swirling bed witches that's out there listening to us right now, <laughs> you better hear me carefully and you better hear Blackbeard carefully. You better. At the end of the day, the white man is always, 99.9% .9 of the time, going to choose a white woman. He just is, man. He does not. He will not choose your self-hating asses. He just won't. That's the that's reality for you. And to keep it real with you, it's the same with the black man. Like nine times out of yeah, man. like nine out of ten times, he's gonna choose a black woman. I mean, all this, that's what I'm saying. Like people, like people out here, they getting butt hurt because they wanted to be in relationships with certain people, and they saw that uh -huh. this person now is dating somebody of the opposite race or ethnicity, and this is the this is the nucleus of their hatred. You know, like that's why they mad. It's like like I was saying, like. These Negro bastards is out here probably mad at some nigga because they wanted him, but he was with some white boy. I mean, with some uh -huh. um, white girl, rather. And it may be yep. the same with some of these super pro-black males. Had some black female he liked, but then she was with some white boy, and all of a sudden, you mad about that shit. Get the fuck out of here, because black men by nature, I expect all of y'all to be like the Marines. Because what we went through, because right. our natural life is the motherfucking Marine training. And although the That's Marine right. training may be a little more formal, it may be a, more, a little more organized for, for specific things that they need you to be trained at. But nevertheless, your That's everyday right. life as a so-called black man and your skin is your fucking badge. And you That's are right. a Marine by birth. That's right. And, and you, you, you black up men. You black up. You better get that shit. You better get that shit because even the Queen B, I remember I pointed that out in one of those videos, what, something she said. 
And even if Queen B know that her swirling movement, it's a it's it's a, a full of shit. Because she said, in her exact word, she said, I am uh what was it? I wanna get her exact word because you guys out there know yeah, I, I, like know, exactly. I don't like to put words in their mouth. Yeah. I don't want to put words. No. I want to give it exactly how she said it. Yeah. She said that she is lost faith in the black women out there. She said that she lost faith in all the black women out there. And when she said that statement, Black Beard, I know exactly what she was saying. Uh -huh. When she said that, what ended up happening, I'm going to tell you what happened to a Black Beard. What ended up happening was the reality started slapping her in the face. Yep. The reality was that all of the stuff that she'd been pushing, trying to get all these boatloads of sisters to stop dating black men, have been working. She, it's not working. And so she started seeing the evidence of it in the backlash. Yep. And these sisters, it's a lot of sisters because that still support brother. Because one thing, brother. the one thing we got to remember now. See the way the whole YouTube platform work platform works that is in the creative the little creator studio in the comments and all that. A lot of these comments have to be approved, and you can go in there and delete comments. So see, we don't know we don't know what comments she's really getting. Like you know how many black women probably in there literally are cussing her the fuck out, but she probably deleting yep. their comments and all this kind of shit. You know how many white men probably in her shit telling her, "Bitch, we don't fucking want you. You keep making these tapes. We fucking hate you." You stupid ass whore, we wanna fucking hang you and we don't wanna rape you, we just want you dead, you dumb bitch. Like we don't even wanna fulfill no fantasy sexually with you, we just want you dead. You know what I mean? These comments that this bitch is getting that she's deleting so we don't publicly see and snapshot that shit and make a fucking tape about that shit. Come on man, y'all not fooling us with that shit. Y'all can take that shit to a brother with a Mickey D's with a Mickey D's or a Burger King toy G E D. A little toy GED, a little Hardy's fucking toy GED. Not, 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 not come to us with that shit. We see through your shit. We don't even gotta think that deep. Cause you motherfuckers are not deep. Cause we true to the game with this shit. We see y'all, man. We real Marines. We natural Marines by birth, man. Y'all are some fucking clowns to us, man. See right through you motherfuckers. I'ma keep my foot on y'all's neck. Straight up. Oh, Blackbeard got a boy. That was a new one right there, Blackbeard. They, 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 you know, they, they, like, like Blackbeard said, take that to a brother with a GED. Don't bring that shit to us. Because the bottom line is this. All of the shit that that queen bee is hiding behind closed doors, she see what the fuck is going on. Exactly. And just like, just like the assassin said, that queen bee is getting all kinds of comments from white men, probably telling her ass, hey, we don't want you motherfuckers. And, and she's hiding that from those bad witches. She's hiding, she's man. De she's deleting them comments. And, and when them white men are telling her ass, hey, we want white women. We want Asian women. Mm -hmm. We want Latino women. When them white men are saying that in that comment, then she's deleting it immediately because she don't want that shit to get out. I know truth. she is, man. I know she is. And these black up men, these motherfuckers sitting here, why here goes this woman, this creature, disrespecting him right in his black ass face. And he's sitting here making excuses for her. Sitting here trying to defend Ghetto Gaggers. Trying to defend Serena Williams. And, and, and like I talked about in that last video, Blackbeard, you got a bang out of that one. You had a weak ass, the exact prototype of what Blackbeard calls a black up man. You had a black up man who was talking about this Queen Bee situation. And this motherfucker had the nerve to text message the Queen B to send her a text message talking about he wants to check on her to make sure that she's okay. If anything defines a black up man, a weak, simp, sorry son of a bitch black man, that's the word for it. That's one right there. Here's a woman who made an entire movement and a platform disrespecting his black ass and he's sending a text message to her talking about is she okay? I'm doing a welfare check on her. Unbelievable, boy. You can't make this shit up. I put a clip of it in that video. You can't make it. You can hear that right from this simp's mouth. And, and that queen bee don't give a damn about his ass. She probably saying to herself, what the fuck is this black son of a bitch sending me a text message for? 
What the fuck is he sending me this text message? I don't give a damn about his black ass. And she, she, she hates him even more because he's a weak simp. One thing about it, these swirling bear winches, they got respect for me and Blackberry. They don't have a choice. They don't have a choice. Because they know we give it to them motherfuckers. We that, we the killmonger. We the killmonger archetype. They know that we don't play the radio. And them motherfuckers at the end of the day, they wish that we was ghetto gagging them. They wish that we put a dog leash around their neck and lay them around the floor like a dog. They want us to do it to them. They don't want, as, as Blackbeard would say, the pale manky. That would crack me up. The pale manky. They don't want the pale manky. They want <laughs> us to put that. <laughs> that that crack me up, that pale manky. I love that one. That's my, my favorite one. The pale manky. <laughs> every time, every time, Blackbeard, when you, when you pull that pale, that pale manky out there, I crack up every time when I hear that right there. I mean, that damn Blackbeard is crazy, boy. It's just but amazing, the, the back, man. But back to you, black up, man. You think, just like this simp, he thinks that by text messaging the Queen Bee, that's going to earn him some brownie points. Don't this weak, weak son of a bitch realize that these disgusting creatures want his black ass eliminated from the earth? Did he not understand that point? They want him wiped out. So that they can get an uh, alpha black male to ghetto gag their ass. Like Blackbeard, the assassin, and Mr. Controversy. That's what they want. They want to get you black up men out of the fucking way. This is facts, man. They're, they're sick of you, new possibility. They're sick of you, feel for that vice show. They're sick of you, lethal lady. That's why your damn view count is, is 30 views. They, they're sick of you kissing their ass. They don't want that. They want the warrior archetype. They want Blackbeard. They want Mr. Controversy. They want somebody who's going to fight the fucking war and come in to win. Chopping off heads. Running motherfuckers over. The tank and the guillotine. That's what they want. You weak ass black up man, you better get your shit together. Or get the fuck out of the way for the big dog. Let us handle the, the, the heavy lifting. You are too weak to do what the fuck it takes. Like that jackass Robert Perkins. You're too weak to do what the fuck it takes. Leave that to us, the big dogs. Yeah, man. I true. say it with him. Yeah, Blackbeard, boy, I'll tell you, man, these motherfuckers get me worked up sometimes, man. I, I can't stand ass kissers. I can't yeah. stand weak people like that, man. When I ran across that damn shit where this jackass sent her a text message, I'm saying to myself, can they get weaker than that? Uh, well, they can't get weaker than that. I put that in that montage. Did you see that montage, Black Bear, of them weak ass black up men? Oh, of course. Of course. Did you see these mother? The one that really got me, it was several of them that, that, that I love. Did you see that one where the, that, that, that weak ass black up man was telling his father uh, he loved him or some shit like that and he broke out crying and then the father broke out crying? Yeah, I when I saw that, when I saw that shit, man, I just, I just, I just, it defies description how weak a black man can get. When I saw that, I, and then that other, that, that Tyrese talking about, uh, what more do you want from me? Oh, that was classic. That was classic. When I saw that motherfucker crying on that shit, what more do you want from me? I, oh man, I died laughing. Yeah, and then Rodney King on the damn thing talking about, can we all get along? Right. Can we all looking at all? Looking like These motherfuckers just ganged up on you and beat you down with them billy clubs so all of America can see. Sparked off Los Angeles riots. And you talk on the damn TV talking about can we all get along? Fuck that. Yeah. Fuck that. I got that Nat Turner mentality. You, you beat my ass on that damn ground. You motherfuckers gang up on me. I'm going to take out 50 of you motherfucker. 50 of you. And if I got on that news... Blackbeard, you know. You know. If, if they would have put me on that motherfucking news, just like when I was on the news down here. And that motherfucking news people, they cut all of that shit out that I said. Them motherfuckers edited out all of that shit. And I told them, well, well, you know, we can't put that on TV. Fuck that. Put it on TV. I want them to hear everything. Fuck that. If they put me on that damn TV, I'll let them know. Every one of you motherfuckers that beat me down on that damn ground, I'm going to buck all you motherfuckers are dead. All of you are dead. You better go and protect them custody because I'm going to take all of you motherfuckers out. So That's what the fuck I would have said to them. So
so but you get this week. Go ahead, brother. I'm gonna say so. Let's do it like this. So um, so go ahead and make your little closing remarks, and then I'm gonna make mine, and then we can go ahead and and exit this because we pretty much hit on all our points. Um, and I'm pretty sure the people got a good classic out of this one. They got a good little um two plus hours. So, you know, this is a good classic and is 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 you know jam packed with everything that they probably expected um on these first few run of topics. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let the brother Mr. Controversy make his closing remarks. Um, you know, whatever he wanna leave you all with. Um, you know, whatever he got coming down the pipe that he wanna tell you about. Um and you know, whatever else comes to the brother's mind, we're gonna let him do that. And then of course Blackbeard will make his and then we will be out. So let the brother Mr. Controversy go on in. Well, I'm trying to calm myself down because that damn Rodney King, man, I, I want to, I you know, I'm telling you, I want to beat that mother. I want them to put Rodney King in a cage with me. I want them to put that weak son of a bitch in a cage with me. I'm going to do what his daddy should have did. Beat his motherfucking ass and put some hair on his chest. Can't we all get along? I'm trying to calm myself down, Blackbeard, because of that shit. Yeah, I see. But, damn, that shit pissed me off. I want to just... Take my damn right hand and punch that motherfucker right in his chest and knock the wind out of his weak ass. Can't we all get along? Fuck that. Ain't no damn getting along. Fuck that. I'm going to buck every damn one of them motherfuckers. Be calm down so I can get this closing out. Calm myself down. Can't stand them weak motherfuckers, man. Oof. Now, now uh, this is something that's coming up the pike. I just wanted to let you guys out there know. There is, uh, me and Blackbeard talked about this. This going to be a hot one here, so you guys can stay tuned for it. It's called the disease of white male worship in the United States. Let me repeat. The disease of white male worship the sickness, in the United States. The fucking sickness. The disease, the sickness. And I'm going to go in that motherfucker like only, you know how Mr. Controversy does it. I'm going to go in on that topic, and I'm going to rip it apart piece by piece by piece. I'm going to turn it upside down, right side up. I'm going to get in on that one, because one thing, Blackbeard, that has pissed me the fuck off, that I'm sick of in this country. I'm sick of seeing it, and I'm sure the white man's sick of it. I'm sick of that shit, I'm, too. I'm, I'm sure he even is sick. If I talk to some white guys, it was a matter of fact, in that video, you guys, you know I'm the master of the montage. I got a clip of a white man saying just that, Blackbeard. I got a clip of the white man saying he's tired of these motherfuckers kissing his ass. He's tired of it. I got the video. I'm going to put it on there. For everybody out yeah, there, yeah, I'm going to put that on the yeah, video. Add, add that shit for these um, uh, Negro news niggas that's sneaking and watching this shit. Woo, they going to they gonna get reality put in their face from the white man's mouth. And he, I've heard several white men talk about it. And I have heard white men, white friends of mine tell me, I don't know why they make such a big deal about me. I'm just a regular man. I'm just a regular man. And then this white man confirmed what them dudes told me. He said it. Why are they kissing my ass like that? I can't stand that shit. And I'm going to put that clip in that video too, so they can hear it for themselves. And the thing that I'm so sick of, these Asian women, oh, I promise. That's another one coming up the pike. Matter of fact, I might put that as a part of this video of the disease of the white male worship. These Asian women, they have been known to be ass, white men ass killers forever. These Latinos, all of these damn bitches. I'm going on. You motherfucking, that non-black women. You thought that you was getting a pass? I'm oh, going to nah, tell you yeah, something. Yeah, get their ass. They thought they was getting a pass. I'm going to tell you motherfucker something. They thought, yeah. Me and Blackbeard, we have, we, we, we do tough love. When we talk about black women and, and these bad witches, we're not doing tough love with the bad witches. We hate them motherfuckers. Yeah, I hate but them. With, the, with the good black women, it's tough love when me and Blackbeard go into topics about them. We're trying to better them. It's tough love. But with you motherfuckers, you non-black women, let me tell you something. Dark One Son made a video way back, and he talked about those silent racists. White women are silent racists. And he was talking about you non-black women as well. And he was talking about his experiences in San Francisco 
up in the Bay Area with different nationalities of women of what he's seeing. And he was being very honest about his experiences with you motherfuckers. And I'm going to tell you something. You thought that you was going to get a pass? You don't get a pass from Mr. Controversy. Because I'm coming after you, motherfuckers, and you're going to get truth put right in your face. So you better get ready, because this coming up the pipe. You non-black women, I'm a, when it comes to this white worship, one thing that everybody out there knows that I have said many times before, I cannot stand an ass kisser of any form. And you non-black women are not getting a pass. Nope. This white worship, this shit's going to come to a stop. Yeah, I ain't going to lie. Because I, of the, you know what? And after you make that one, I'm going to watch yours. And I may be piggybacking on that, on these non-black women in this white worship, because cause they thought they was getting away with that shit. And um, and, yeah. and some of the shit that I've seen, you know, I'll be honest, the only reason a black female looks very, very silly is because she's physically so opposite of, of, of Caucasian people. So when she puts that blonde shit and that blue, eyes, blue shit in her eyes, she just looks dumber. But the subtle shit is really crazier when these, with these other goddamn women. So yeah, I, I'm looking forward to a lot of shit you got coming. Um, no, because I'm going to put that OK Cupid right back in that one again. And it's going to prove the point. Every one of those non-black women all pointed to the white man. Every single those, not every one of those non-black women pointed to the white man. The Latino women. Who they want? The white man. Because you know, because you know, because you, know, you, know the you know these other races of men, they'll try to come and listen to your shit and be like, oh, he, 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 oh, them black women, they fucked up, man. Damn, I'm glad my women ain't doing that shit. So they thinking yeah, that they... Yeah, they gonna get some reality. They, they gonna that, get yeah. some reality. Yeah, they thinking that... Put they, in that yeah. fucking face. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for that shit. Well, it's gonna drop. And I promise you, motherfucker, I promise that I was gonna get in you non-black women's asses. I promise I was gonna get you. Because I'm gonna tell you something. You think that every black man out here... It's going to kiss your ass. Right. Well, I got news for you. <laughs> I don't kiss nobody's ass. Bang. And I'm going to tell you something. I know that you motherfuckers kiss the white man's ass. And I'm going to tear you into fucking pieces. So you better get ready for it. You non-black women, you better get ready fucking for it. Because I'm coming after your asses. Because this white worship, it's going to stop. And I'm going to put a stop to you motherfuckers. Because none of these black men out here besides me and Blackbeard, and David Carroll and Kid Organic have a balls to tell you the truth about you, motherfucker. You think nobody... See, I'm going to tell you something, Blackbeard. They are so used to these weak-ass black up men who make these stupid-ass videos kissing their ass. And just like Dark One's son made another great video when he was talking about big up and groups of women. And he was talking about, you don't, you don't give props to nobody that don't give you props. No. And the bottom line is when you got these non-black women sitting up there kissing a white man's ass, and then you got these brothers making these videos like 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 these non-black women checking for their ass, no the hell they not. They are just like those swirlers. You got exceptions to the rule all the time. Exactly. You might you might have some Latino I've had Latino chicks. I've had white chicks, I've had chicks that I've seen. All kinds of different chicks. Right. But that was exceptions to the rule. Right. That's exceptions to the rule. That's not, that does not represent the majority of them. And that's the part that we're talking about, the majority. And the majority of them was represented on that OK Cupid survey. All of those motherfuckers was out there kissing a the white man's ass. And you non-black women, you better get ready because I'm coming for you. Get ready for it. Mr. Controversy is going to tell the truth about you motherfuckers. Them black up men... They're weak ass, don't have the balls to, to tell the truth about you, but I do. So you get ready for it. Because I see you motherfuckers kissing a white man's ass. You're not going to get a pass from me. Discriminating against other races of men. Kissing a white man's ass. You thought nobody saw that? Did you think that you got a pass? That nobody, every black, you know what? That's something else, Blackbeard, that Dark One Son brought up. They think that all black men are dumb. Which, actually, they got a good point there. They do actually have a point there. So there's a large remnant of black men that are, that are dumb. But they thought that all black men were dumb. And that's where they went wrong. They think, like Dark One said, that we don't see what they be doing. 
how they, they thumb their nose up at black men, how they try to act all snobby towards black men. You think we don't see that? How you kiss the white man's ass? We see that. There's some smart brothers out here that see what the fuck you do. And gonna call your motherfucking ass out. You don't get a pass from Mr. Controversy or Blackbeard. Let that be known. So you better get ready, you motherfuckers, because it's going down. That's facts, man. That's facts. So, um, so you, brother, so you, so anything, anything else you wanted to drop? No, that's it, brother. I, I, I wanted to get in them motherfuckers' ass before I got off of this damn collaboration because that was something that I was heated about. And I promised that I was going to get on their ass because I've been noticing that shit. Blackbeard, you know, you, you know, I sit back sometimes, Blackbeard, and I observe. I observe, and I've made that statement all the time. Don't believe your lying eyes. And people can tell you anything. But when you sit back and you observe what's going on around you, that's how I come up with a lot of the shit that I come up with, a lot of my theories. And so what I do, as I sit back and I observe in the real world, I go and I do research and see if my research lines up with what I see in the real world. And that's how the shit that I say, the challenges that I put out there, that's why they cannot be deconstructed. That's why I'm the heavyweight champion on them motherfuckers, the challenges. Because they cannot dispute it. Because I have sat out there in the real world and I observe what goes on around me. And the same with you non-black women. I have been, I have, as, as David Carroll would say, I put you motherfuckers under a microscope for years. And I've been watching you motherfuckers. I've been watching you. And I see how you kissed the white man's ass. You thought that, that every black man was dumb. You thought that they're all stupid. That they wouldn't see what you're doing. Well, I got news for you. You miss one. You miss two, matter of fact. Me and the assassin. That's facts, man. That's facts. So, so there y'all have it on the brother, Mr. Controversy, just went in, um, dropped his final remarks. As you can see, you got a lot coming down. So y'all go ahead and subscribe, um, check out his stuff, you know, view his page. You know, as usual, I'll be shouting out, you know, when he drops his stuff, because a lot of it I'll reference and probably even put in my description tapes. Um, and, and some of these last few topics that he named sound pretty hot. So I'll be ch checking them out and, and, and more than likely doing some, um, you know, doing my own takes on these subjects. Um, as far as with me, y'all know how the Mirage Universe goes. Um, really, when I plan tapes and stuff like that, it's usually... Believe it or not, it usually is like five minutes before I do it. So, um, whatever comes to my mind, you know, y'all will see that shit just show up um, and stuff like that. And then y'all can, you know, tune in to it as usual. But, um, but as far as this collaboration, you know, this is probably going to be getting ready to wrap up. Um, it was a real good one. You know, y'all got a lot out of this one. Uh, research and just looking to what we were saying, you know, and, and stay tuned for the next one. So, I'm about to get ready to close on out on this. Um, as I said, share these tapes. Check out the brother Mr. Controversy. Check out the boy Blackbeard's playlist. Um, and until the next time, y'all stay tuned. Y'all stay strong. And we out. We out.